Welcome to Caffeine Corner. I'm Steve. This is Chesh, and we are not professionals. Just getting that right hey. out of the way. Of, uh, I, I think there's some confusion there of uh, people thinking that this is a professional thing. This is not a professional thing. This is just we have fun. Let I me mean, make some you know money out of it. By the way, uh, we should note that uh, it is after the first of the year, and uh, Chesh out here gets now 25 percent of all super chats. Yay! So you don't have to like Yay. sit there and go. This part is for Chesh, or this is for whatever. It's just flat. Any super chat we get, she gets twenty five percent of. Um, Duelander gets a fixed fee that he for producing, so he's hired. Uh, so they make some money. Yay! Yay! He's an artist, and you know they don't make a lot. Ugh. I want to talk about it. Struggling artist. <laughs> Gotta get you some um, commissions. Well, I told you. Look, I have dude. a couple on the backlog that I'm just trying to finish and get reorganized, but there's just been so much crap going on. I've been I've been struggling to get things organized. If you were to do what you did in the pre-show, I'm just saying, um, there's money to be had there. Trina, I'm sure would throw in a, a, a few shekels for that. You guys, Trina, you don't even know what you missed. I'm telling you right now, you'd have lost your freaking mind. <laughs> like, where would I do that on YouTube? Like, I, no, I, well, no, well, see, here's the thing. I don't think it's like, yeah, I think it's, I think it is against two S because you're getting money to do something of a it's not really sexualized nature but i mean i don't think you could do it i don't know I, it's really weird how t that works on uh on uh, youtube so i really don't know what we'd I'm have to do sure. is we'd have to look at the terms of service and then have if Trina it were kind me, of the way i would it. do it the, the way i would do it if i was actually gonna do it is i would do that but i would play beat saber so i'd be playing a game oh but I don't that's have actually a brilliant anymore. idea. So, so, if somebody wants to fund me an Oculus, <laughs> and somebody wants to fund me the game, I'll I'll do that. That's fine. Isn't, no that more of a Twitch, that. isn't that more of a Twitch thing, though? You can do you it. You used to be a Twitch, Twitch girl, so that's true. No, I didn't did start off on Twitch yet. Yeah. It didn't have all nipples. It, we're talking more the other end. You guys don't may not remember, but not, Cheshire is like legit ninety five percent ass. That's a, her entire sure. body is like just that. She has like a couple eyes, hair, but the vast majority of her is just a butt. I'm basically just a walking ass. <laughs> yeah, she's a walking ass, so. <laughs> yeah, you think my top half is bad? You guys only see like here up. Everything is like down there. <laughs> it's a little bottom heavy, but 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 anyway, she was put on a show for Bullinator <laughs> about uh, five minutes before we went on air. <laughs> I just happened to catch the tail end of it. No pun intended. Oh, actually, kind of pun intended. <laughs> I was like, damn. Uh, she's really shaking her moneymaker there. Okay, whatever. I don't judge, man. Uh, so, now I'm anyways. Uh, yeah, by the way, since we're not professional, because uh, I guess Cheshire has decided to eat, drink, and be merry on camera. She's not professional. Um, during, <laughs> what, during rum and coke. During rum and coke nights. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't know Rum and Coke Night was a really high end production. <laughs> Predict that that it'll this clip will be used that I'm begging for money later. <laughs> She's not doing anything uh, for it yet. She hasn't earned it yet. I'm I'm telling her she she'll get a separate account for that. That's all hers. I I don't want to make a dime off her ass. I'm not her pimp. I'm not her manager. You know. <laughs> Now, I could shake mine and make yeah, some money out of it, maybe, but that's mine. I mean, I do what I want with my ass. Sort of. Uh, yeah. I don't know if any of us. A lot of things really come to mind on that. No. Yeah. Everybody's going to start thinking Steve is professional now. It's because he was in a studio on a produced show. I was in a studio. It's not, it is, will be a produced show. Uh, it is live with real, real actual TV cameras and stuff, high end stuff. I mean, the, the, the actual studio room. Is looks like you would imagine. It's got monitors galore. It's got the sound panels. It have these big computer type systems. It's pretty high end. I saw that picture and it looked like he was on Doctor Phil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Mister, we got a super chat. You want you, you want to do your super chats because you get you get Mr. now percent of all super chats. Said, for five said uh, you two play Portal Two together. This I would pay to watch. We do have it set up. I'm just uh, getting a new graphics card. Once I have my graphics card ordered, I've had some people actually be kind enough to donate me a little bit of money to uh to help out getting a new one so i should have a new one soon yeah and i i told her that i would play board portal 2 with her so yeah 
Uh, Mr. Says Steve already secretly doxed half of Chicago since the stream started. Yeah, we're gonna be talking about doxing, Mr. Eventually, um, a couple things we want to talk about first. I, I have been asked to talk a little bit about truth and claims, and I'm gonna be doing that shortly. And then we're gonna get into when the principle of charity no longer applies. But uh, I think Cheshire had a few things he wanted to go over first. Um, well, we wanted to talk about um, the definitions of doxing, trolling, and projection, because these words are getting thrown around a lot, and, well, two of them are getting thrown around a lot, and the other one is kind of what's happening a lot, and the faster you can recognize projection and when it's happening, the better. It's, it's, if you can recognize it, you can recognize it quickly, glorious. Uh, Ilya for five said, uh, I'm nothing but professional. Speak for yourselves. <laughs> because Ilya. By the way, if you haven't out. noticed, I'm muting okay, when I'm really. sneezing. Uh, I wasn't kidding about allergies kicking my ass. Um, I don't know how, if you guys know this, but allergies can actually wear down your energy, especially when you're sneezing because it's like this burst of energy. And my body feels like it's been run over by a freaking stream a, a steamroller. The other day, I was could not stop sneezing. Uh, poor Chesh was just like, dying but i, I so i'm gonna try to he mute, would but sneeze actually, and I, my head yeah, would go to the side because yeah right i was like here. you know i just like exploding out um so i do apologize for that i am not feeling well still uh i've been ODing on benadryl just trying to get my histamine levels down but i still have watery eyes i still have uh sneezing i think it's probably for, for the fact that i came back from texas and you know you're in the airplane with a bunch of people and i guess uh, dallas is one of the worst allergens uh cities in the, in the united states and our producer's not feeling well too well either so and and we're gonna to try to make. We're gonna to try to muddle through this. We're, we're all a bunch of sickies right now. And the Cheshire's sure. are doing that great. Even music. God's sick. Yeah, when God gets sick, you know it's gonna be a problem. But I, forgive me for like I said. I know I sound off, and you know, I, 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 for two days now, I've just been allergic to everything. So, anyways, back to so what we we're talking about. So doxing and these words Do doxing trolling and projection so i'm gonna go read you guys because we're using we're not using technical definitions we are using commonly used definitions so we're taking the definition from urban dictionary um and this is the top definition and it's actually pretty good and i'm actually going to go into it a little bit more but i'll read it for you first so it says trolling as it rela a verb as it relates to the internet is the deliberate act by a troll noun or adjective um, of making random, unsolicited, and or controversial comments on various internet forms with the intent to provoke an emotional knee-jerk reaction from unsuspecting readers to engage in fight or argument. Trolling online forms, as described above, is, a uh, is actually analogous to um, the phishing technique of trolling, where colorful baits and lures are uh, pulled behind a slow-moving boat, often with multiple fishing lines covering a large body of water such as a lake or the ocean. The trolling lures attract unsuspecting fish, intriguing them with the way they move through the water, thus enticing these foolish fish to take the bait. Not unlike unsuspecting internet victims, once hooked, the fish are reeled in for the catch. Before they are released, they have been duped by the troll slash fisherman. So, essentially what it, what it means is that you kind of cast out hooks for people to and and it's usually it's unsolicited it's unrelated um some usually it's like a lot of people go for like the ad home a lot of people will go for just like the oh you're fat like stuff like that and it's that's that's bad trolling um you've got people like steven steen and um brass who both steven. are actually very who are actually very good, good at trolls. this oh, most yeah. of the time trolling well m most people who are trolls are harmless. They're not actually looking to cause you active harm. They are looking to like get you riled up. They're they're hecklers. They're they're or Statler and Waldorf from the Muppets. They're Statler and Waldorf from the Muppets. They're they're hecklers. They're they're just giving you a hard time. Most of the time they're not trying to actively hurt they're, your feelings. They're benign. Most of the time. This is why I say there's lever there's tears of trolling. I like to heckle people and give them a hard time on Twitter. It's it's just a good time. It's not nobody's trying to harm anybody else. But then there's it, eventually you can kind of get into these darker places where people are actively trying to harm you, and that's when it turns into more of a bullying thing rather than an actual. You're not actually a troll anymore. Um. So, it that does is that does that make sense? Does everybody kind of have an understanding of what trolling is and how it can it can get twisted if it 
you can start going for like trying to get like uh, getting an emotional reaction doesn't necessarily mean that you are trying to hurt the person to get a reaction it could mean that you're just trying to get them a little bit riled up because they said something silly and you're like oh herpeter. like it's yeah, a, that's, that's definitely most something of that's the time it's has almost all trolls i would say trolling has a commonality of the, they're trying to get you to react sometime in some way right i mean if somebody's going to troll they want a reaction very few instances i can think of some why somebody would troll if they were trying to get some reaction out of it for whatever their reasoning is if it's just just a harmless uh thing like you know brass or, or steven steen where they're doing some kind of benign trolling to get a uh, you know comedic type reaction most people don't really care about that kind of stuff but it's still trying to elicit a reaction well i mean brass will tell you straight yeah. off he's trying to piss people off but you know he he doesn't do it in a malicious way he doesn't lie um, he doesn't fabricate stuff. He doesn't have that next level of trolling. He doesn't go into people's personal yeah. history and pull out, you know, whatever he can to try to to harm them. Those are different levels. And of that brass has never all brought to do up some your kind of daughter, reaction. right? What? Like, like brass has never brought up your daughter. Brass has never contacted yeah, no, your family. Yeah. Bra like, yeah, he would never do such a, a thing. He's not that. He's not that kind of guy. And criticism about the topic is not trolling. So if we're sitting around talking about this right now and somebody says, oh, well, I don't think that's actually the definition of trolling. I think it's this instead. That's not trolling. If I, if I make a claim and somebody says, actually, your claim's wrong, here's the information, that's not trolling. But if we're talking about trolling and somebody says, hey, your definition of something else from way, way before, you're starting to get into trolly territory. You might not be doing it on purpose, but you're talking about something completely unrelated. And if you come in here and yeah. just say you're fat, you're you're just a bad troll. <laughs> you're bad at it. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, like whatever the reason like... would be, if, if somebody brings up my daughter as a weapon, uh, what are the reason would there be other than trolling to to elicit an emotional it's response? Malicious. But if somebody says, it, "Here is some material fact," and I say, "No, your material fact is incorrect. Let me show you why." There's no trolling going on there. Correct. I'm not. I I don't ever go around trying to get emotional responses from people. Same with like calling somebody out. If you say, if somebody says something and somebody else says, you know, that's not true, or you said this before, that's not trolling. It's not trolling. If, if you just throw out an insult, that's just bad trolling. <laughs> it's just poor trolling. You're doing a bad yeah, I mean, that's job. Like, that's like zero, that's like zero level trolling. You know, that's like the, if you, the most basic you funny. can get is just throw out an insult. Yeah. <laughs> you're just, just, we're just going to have any talent to be. To, to throw out an insult. I mean, if you're going to be a troll like Mr. Brass, at least he could come up with some pretty funny stuff every so often. Mm -hmm. He same also could be pretty crass. Same, yes. And, but same with Steven Steen. I would make the argument that some some of Dick Dawson's comments are a little bit trolly. He goes a little bit trolly because he's trolling flat earthers to be like, no, you're just stupid, blah, blah, blah. And it's, and it's like he's trying well, no, to get I mean, them okay, I get to too. Them I, into a conversation. I, I I can safely say I've done light trolling to bait flat earthers. I, I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. That's how actually where my coke night started. Yeah, it's the thing. The difference is is what we're talking about is there's there there's a line where what trolling actually is versus criticism, which is not trolling, versus calling somebody out for no, you're lying about this. That's not trolling. But there there's a subcategory down here where you're just malicious, and now you're not a troll anymore. You're a bully. Yeah. And, and by the way, from my bully, perspective, I wouldn't call it trolling. But if other people said I was trolling flat earthers, I wouldn't really argue against it. But to, for, to my perspective, I, I, I mean, I'm fishing for them to try to come over and have a conversation with me. And, you know, that takes a talent sometimes because, you know, flat earthers get scared really easily. Like like this, those, you know, big fish that, you know, they're looking at the lore and they're like running away. That's flat earthers. So, I mean, and maybe in some kind of metaphorical way, it's trolling. I typically don't think that I was trolling, but if somebody argued that I was, I wouldn't argue against it. I couldn't care either way. But that's, like I said, that's really superficial, mundane type uses of the word trolling. When you start talking about people that are actually malicious in their trolling, now you've reached a whole different level. Yes. Let's see what... Um, Try to catch up in the live chat uh, real quick. Uh, I'm having a hard time reading this, but. Uh... Flat earthers beg to be trolled. I, it's hard to not make fun of the flat earthers. Yeah, just because the thing yeah, is, is like, it, it's, it's, it's not malicious. It's razzing and, and, and make, and making fun of, of bad ideas. Yeah, I mean, that, 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 can be, that can be considered stupid. like 
base level base that's level basically, exactly that's level zero trolling if i say flat earth are stupid that's still an insult you know i'm still trying to get i mean i don't really care if i get a rise out of it or not to me it's a statement of fact you know, they, flat earth right. are stupid we could get into well sometimes of fact the rise you're looking to get isn't from the person yeah sometimes the rise you're looking to get isn't from that person sometimes it's from their audience sometimes it's from other people it's it, like the, the rise that you're getting doesn't hair, have to be. Kiki, Kiki says, uh, Chester's hair is prettier than yours, Steve. Do I get an emotional response? No, what you get is a timeout. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> you're, welcome, you're welcome to think that is wrong. It's, it's an ontological fact that's not correct. But, you know, you can have false beliefs. That's okay. Yeah, no, she got I have hair. to cut all my hair off in the summer. No, don't you dare. Why would you dye do that? all purple. You can dye it, but why would you want to cut it? Because it's long and in my way. So does that kind of uh, go over again what we mean by trolling? Because I notice a lot of people that will just throw out that word trolling. Like anybody who disagrees with somebody is a troll. If you call Cheshire an I or like, well, Cheshire's done a little bit of trolling. I've seen her troll a little bit on, on level zero kind of stuff, trolling on That's why on, I started calling uh, it a Twitter. goblin. I'm not trolling a goblin <laughs> yeah, at you know. this point. I'm not trying to cause any harm to anybody. I might be trying to cause yeah, I'm sure would never do anything malicious. I would never, I would not support her doing anything malicious. Um, it's just not mm -hmm. my character. But when people call me a troll, I'm like, what the hell you think? What possible thing in what reality could I be a possible troll? I don't try to elicit responses from people. I want to get information out there. I want to have, be entertaining. I want to have dialogue. I don't give a crap about the drama. If the drama all went away, I'd be extremely happy. But unfortunately, people involving myself, my family, my, my, uh, you know, my daughter, my friends, it makes it a little more difficult, right? But they're the ones doing the trolling to elicit a, a response by bringing in my friends, my family into the dialogue. They are the trolls. This, my favorite is when people try to claim you're trolling in your own post. Like they came to you. <laughs> so, so like you make a post, then they say, oh my God, you're such a troll. And you're like, this is my post. <laughs> I didn't post no, well, even, this even on when, anybody even else. about philosophy, you know, I, I mean, like, you know, you know, talking talk to an atheist who doesn't know much about philosophy, and I'll be, like, trying to explain to them, and they're like, you're just trolling. I'm like, why what am I trolling? I'm not trying to listen to response to you. I'm trying to explain to you how you're incorrect with evidence. That's not trolling. Yeah, criticism and, and showing out. somebody that they're wrong is not trolling. But that's their defense. Oh, you're just trolling. That's It says a bastardization of the war that waters it down to absolutely nothing. Yeah. There's nobody and, in the right mind, mind that, that would people, me a troll. People can use criticism in the guy, like troll in the guise of criticism. So somebody could show up and say, and, and like you could answer their, like they come and they could answer a generally mundane question, and you answer their question, and then they continue, they can continue going and and just be like, oh well, let's talk about this. Oh well, let's talk about this. Oh, well, and they would just keep throwing stuff out, and it's like I'm done. I already answered your question. If you want more information right. about a situation, go look for it. I'm not going to play your game. I'm not going to do like I'm not going to sit here and hold your hand through everything. This has already been addressed. This is already in a video. I've already told you where to find it. What do you want? And then they and then the when somebody's trolling you, will come back with, "Oh, well, you told me to go watch this person's video." No, I told you to go find the information. You might be able to find it there. You can choose to go watch that or not. When somebody just takes yeah, and twists your words constantly, they're trolling. That's what trolling is. Right, and that, and and this is where a lot of times people, I think, make a mistake. They feed. There's different types of trolls. Some of them want you to feed into them, and the the best way to avoid them is just not feeding into them. But if you need to, say, you know what, there's already been addressed. Here's your videos. Have a nice day. That's it. I mean, yeah. if you continue with them, then you're feeding into them, and then I place the, the burden on you to, to to basically recognize the fact that, you know what, you're just as bad as them if you're feeding into a troll and you haven't recognized the fact that the only reason the person is trolling is you're allowing them to do so. You're, just, you're part of the problem, in my opinion, at that point, because I just block people right off. You know, if I see somebody trolling, I will give them the benefit of the doubt. We'll get into the principle of charity here. But for the most part, if, if I think that they're just absolutely trolling right off the bat, I don't even respond to them. I just block. Yeah, it's, it's just right a waste of time. Blood. I had somebody doing that. I had somebody doing that to me earlier. Uh, welcome, Peachy and Helios uh, for welcome. fives. Uh, Helios for five said, uh, "Just like hackers, there are three ways to troll: benevolently to do something good, neutral for fun, and malevolently to cause in real life harm to your victims." Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, there's no, there's more than acceptable. one. Yeah, I I don't know if I don't know if there's a 
benevolent trolling. Yeah. Because I don't think well, I don't think you would define it as trolling at that point. But... I don't. Well, hang on. I, I would argue, and this is okay. Let's hypothetical. Um, I would mm -hmm. argue that maybe benevolent trolling would be somebody who trolls on a parody account just to make fun, just to entertain. Like there are some there are some parody uh, accounts that are just well, funny. that would be neutral. It's for fun. Is it? That's, I'm not new. I don't know. Is it neutral? If I mean, if it's beneficial, to, to make somebody laugh. Well, okay, the, in benevolent, you would have to have a goal of. You'd have to have some kind of goal. Making so maybe laugh. benevolent trolling. But then it wouldn't maybe. be neutral. So okay, so I I might make. Well, yeah, I may it wouldn't be, be neutral if your goal is make them laugh. Benevolent. I guess. I guess there's a difference. I mean, between this is worst case. Selfish. Yeah, I, I mean, for if I had to take benevolent trolling, that would be. Uh, you know, know, this is one of those things where I think you'd have to decide for yourself whether it's benevolent trolling or just neutral. Yeah, it, you, it, those might be interchangeable. I would, I would say that you, you, you're trolling for the greater good, but I don't know what the greater good would be or why you would choose to use trolling as the tactic. So, like, I guess you. That's could, like, almost like utilitarianism. You you're trolling account. for the greater good. Yeah, I don't. I just don't. I'm not sure how that would how that would translate because i guess you could you could argue that somebody who like okay here's a good got one trump criticizes trump that entire subreddit is a troll but it's for the greater good because it's benevolent because it's basically like here's what this person said in 2016 and here's what they're doing they're criticizing themselves fair enough yeah so i might call that yeah. i might call that maybe um, yeah well i'm like said it depends if you want to call it benevolent or not go ahead yeah, uh, failed at engineering for two says, uh, Chesh, I need your hacking skills for a job. Uh oh. Now I'm being solicited. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. Yeah, like, tr like <laughs> Trina says, Oh my God, you're describing my whole life as a parody. And her life is a parody, but like what Trina does is parody. Uh, it's, yes. But is it trolling? I'm, no, I don't see any trolling in it, but it's parody, no, but it's entertaining. Not necessarily. Yeah. But Slaughter uh, has become a member. Thank you, But Slaughter. Um, Ink, Ink Boy asked a good question. They said, how can we be sure that you're not trolling us with the definitions of trolling? Well, actually, because I told you where you can get the source of what information I'm using. Uh, it oh, is I the have very good, first have top... Hmm? Sorry, go ahead. It's the top definition on Urban Dictionary that we're yeah. using because we're specifically using layman's terms. We're not looking for technical definitions because we're talking about how people use a... these terms in general speech. I got a perfect example of benevolent trolling. When these Go computer guys call up these, see these scammers, you know, saying, "Well, you have Windows problems." Call up the, the this, you know, number, and they call it up and they put it on a virtual machine and they expose them as scammers. They're essentially trolling them, but for bene beneficial, benevolent reasons. How about that? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I would agree that I'm, I'm pretty sure, like a lot of uh, you, you pr hat, probably make that trolling. argument a lot about the FBI when they're going after like people who go after kids. You, you sure, might yeah. be able to call that trolling, arguably. Well, um, yeah, I mean, in, in the loosest by, sense, by the, in the definition general sense, that they're, 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 they're legitimately sure. putting posts, they're legitimately putting false posts to solicit yeah. responses to pull these people in, to reel them in. So yeah. there's, you know, I guess. Yeah. Um, so Trina asks, what, okay, so what, what's the difference wanna... between. Oh. Yeah, well, good. We got more. No, I was going to ask if you want to move on to the to doxing, but if we have another question. Yeah, because Trina asked, what's the difference between exploiting and doxing? And then we had a super chat. Yeah, oh, perfect. Yeah, it's going to lead right into what we're doing. Uh, Speed for two right. says, I, I do benev benevolent trolling through ironic punchlines. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Chris Henson, um, troll king. <laughs> our, our DG Gaming says, yep, still ha waiting for one to call me. I have a VM ready to go. I like VMs. I actually... I actually test out uh, different types of distri uh, distributions for Linux using VM machines rather than do a full install. It's a hell of a lot easier uh, if you got the system. If you have a computer that's powerful enough to do it, where you're going to, you know, put like a couple cores to it and put some RAM to it and have enough hard drive space. Running a VM for Linux is like, awesome uh, to try it out. I actually but, do right. want to address something real quick before sure. we move on, um, uh, because somebody said uh, KJ considers anyone who disagrees with her a troll disagreeing with somebody is not trolling denying facts can be trolling so if if 
I'd say it's a material fact that something happened and I can prove that that thing happened. Like I could say that this person said this, here's the timestamp. And somebody says, no, that didn't happen. Now, it sounds like somebody, more like could do the, somebody could say it, it to a degree. Yeah. You could j gaslighting and you can use gaslighting to troll. Um, oh, yeah, so there's, absolutely. this is where it turns more. This is not classical trolling. This is into the bullying stages. This is, this is sub trolling, <laughs> I guess. Um, this is advanced trolling says, 101. This is, is an advanced trolling. So if somebody goes ahead and says that, oh, this is what was said, here's the timestamp, and that timestamp doesn't show that, that person is not, that this is no longer an honest interlocutor. That's not what that says. You've t either taken it out of context or you've purposefully misinterpreted it or you've accidentally misinterpreted it. Now, if you've accidentally misinterpreted it and the person says, actually, that's not what that says, here's what it says, and you say, no, it still says this, you're not an honest interlocutor anymore. Right. Now you're getting into the bullying point and gaslighting. Like, that's not what that says. Yeah, we see that quite frequently. As a matter of fact, uh, somebody pointed out the other day, I didn't even think about this. Somebody actually put it in a comment. I don't know who it was, so I can't contribute it to it. But uh, somebody had mentioned like the other day when I was putting out um, some of the correspondence between like Kyle and I, where he legit was gaslighting me when he was telling me that I signed documents that I never signed. He was getting to me. Correct. He was trying to have me question my own recollection of things. And then he will, says, well, you figuratively signed them. That, to me, is a perfect example of gaslighting. And I didn't even recognize it as such until somebody actually pointed it out to me. Would you agree that was gaslighting? Oh, yeah. No, I, that was 100% I mean, gaslighting. Like, what? Yeah, he was trying to... Yeah, I'm like, what, what are you talking was... about? Did I sign some PDF that I don't know of? Did I, did, did I do something I wasn't aware of? Yeah, and then, he tried, and then he tried to put blame on you, saying, oh, well, I hope you didn't sign something you didn't even read. So he's trying yeah. to like put pressure on you and then refuse to even tell you what the hell he was talking about. Ah, that's what that's that's to me was now that I think about it, that, that does make sense of this gaslighting because I was like, what the hell is he talking about? But anyways, I so feeding into the uh, next uh, thing, which is doxing. And a lot of people, again, have these weird ideas of what doxing really is. I have uh, somebody who I'm not going to mention any names, but somebody was sending me stuff earlier saying, well, you know, like such and such dox themselves, blah, 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 blah. And I don't think they, that they really were. Um, doxing, generally speaking, in the community has a very specific connotation. It's generally considered to be negative, obviously. Uh, it's usually to, to people wanting to harm somebody. It is for um, anything, all the ranging from extortion to just um, trying to harm their stand, uh, standing in the community by putting out personal information about them for various reasons that are not normally public, such as people's names, people's address, where they work. And let's say like, let's say like Cheshire has, let's say she works, let's say at Target, but she doesn't put that public information out there. It's not her Facebook. It's not anywhere. She's actually have said, you know, I prefer people don't know where I work because then they would be able to call up my boss and, and harass them, which happens quite frequently. There are many people in our community. Uh, well, I should say our, our community, the people that are like outside of the community that will use these types of tactics to try to harm people, like calling people's work it happens frequently. And so she's trying to keep that information private, right? But let's say, you know what? I happen to know Chess in real life. I happen to been, I happen to actually go to her job. And I was, and, but then I go online and say, hey, look, hey, Chess works at Target. That to me is doxing because that is private information she has not made public and does not want it to be made public for her own protection. At that point, you're causing harm to her because now people that have any beef with Cheshire instead of being able to, just talk to her about the issues, they can actually make it something into real life and go after her uh, in real life and her job, which happens frequently. They've now put her in a position of being harmed by their actions. The same thing by giving a, a person's uh, address or their telephone number. They could be harassed. They can have people go over to their house. If something's already been made public, that's not doxing. Even if the person does it themselves, you know what? The information's already out there. If Cheshire, you know, one day in on some video said, yeah, well, my name is full name is this. Even if she removes that video, she's already doxxed herself. It's done. Yes. I don't think yeah. there's any, I don't think there's any take backs on any of that stuff. If you put out your information for whatever reason, game over. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's public domain at that point. Now I, co myself, like, I confirmed. I, I, Sorry. Go ahead. 
I just finished this point. Myself, if somebody says like, let's say, uh, let's say like my friend Dick Dawson, who I just looked at his name, and Dick Dawson messed up and he put some information out there and he we attracted it later and said, you know, I, I really don't want people using this information. I'm going to be like, yeah, I'm not going to be a dick and use that information. Somebody else might be, and but then the problem becomes that person using that information, they they might be a dick for doing it, but they're not doxing him. That to me is how I utilize these terms. Uh, so when yeah. people say, well, I've been doxed, you can't be doxed if you put out your real information. You can't be doxed if your information's already out there. And first of all, if if somebody like says like Steve's doxed somebody, I've never put out information that wasn't already public, ever. Ever. There's a, I want to specify something. There's a narrative going, there are two narratives going around about me right now. One is that uh, my name was uh, publicly available on my Facebook. I have yet to see any evidence of that. Um, apparently there's screenshots of it, but I've never seen them and nobody will share them with me who says that they had them or says that that's a thing. So I've never seen it on your Facebook. I don't know what they're getting or where they're getting that from. Secondly, um, I never claimed that Katie doxed me. What I said is that she's perpetuating an old doxing attempt. That's different. Somebody tried to dox me in the past, and now she's bringing it back up and showing it again. Now, I have at this point, I'm pretty sure, made it quite clear that, yes, that is my actual name. <laughs> and now nobody can ever dox me again because now it's public and I've confirmed it. Yeah. All right. And my name records is are Victoria. Public. My last name is Klein. Congratulations. That is the spelling. That is correct. But she did not dox me. It was a perpetuate. She perpetuated a failed dox from before because I didn't confirm yeah. it at that time. And failed doxing is a real thing. For example, like I had somebody once try to put out my address um, on a form and my, my new ad where I'm at is public. It's I have not hidden. It. I did it. I've never, but I, but I didn't make my old address public. But it's still out there if somebody wanted to want to go find it. Uh, but that's them having to go look for it and then putting it out there. That is considered to me a failed docs attempt um, because they're trying to put out information about me that I have not made public about my old address because there's an old family living there now. Why? Why would you harass them, right? I mean, that's just silly to to put out old information. Uh, so this is these are failed docs attempts now. Yes. everything about my life is pretty public where i worked whatever uh, i have nothing really I, well i can't think of anything that i've ever hidden if someone wants to know something about me just ask me right but i do keep things private like my daughter's address right nobody's ever known that mm -hmm. nobody will ever know that it's but also if somebody, if that information um, gets out that's outright doxing yeah there's also something to be said for um a failed doxing attempt should be treated just as seriously as an active like one uh, like a successful one because that in that behavior is not acceptable not like you don't do that that is a huge no-no it, it puts people at risk it puts people that people don't understand a lot of people don't understand and and it's a shame that the internet is a dangerous place people can use your name it's not a full docs if you've if i never released my name whatsoever and my name got out there. That is not a full dox, no, because they didn't give like contact information or um, an address or like a way to find me. So they have to use my name to then go digging to try and find like a, a relative location, and then sh they kind of try and there, there's a lot of work you'd still have to do with just with just a name. So it's not a full dox anyway. But these things need to be taken seriously because that information can either one be used. Two, if they succeed in a full dox, I am now under physical danger because now anyone on the internet, anyone, that information can now show up on like incel forums. I can literally be attacked in my own home if that information gets out. And, and, or and but if you who did have on your me. Facebook, if anywhere you put, you know, Victoria or whatever, you have that on your Facebook, no matter what. You you put the information out there that like nobody can dox you at that point. I'm just sorry that you, well, right. if you put out if you if you put out your own information or you somehow let your information slip, you're done. You can't then go back to yes. say that somebody else doxed you. Um, Correct. Like &D, yeah, that is. Uh, either, said, if I did it by accident, that's my own fault. You're screwed. Screwed. Yeah. Yep. RNGD Gaming says like when Steve calls me Paul, I'm not being doxed is out there. Plus, I don't give a fuck. But you know, I call him Paul because he's a friend of mine, and that's 
you know, actually what he goes by on other things, but that's not doxing, right? I mean, but you notice a lot of times I'll call people by their first name. I'm like, I'm not doxing them um, because you know somebody, some idiot that is watching is going to go, oh, look, Steve just doxed somebody because they're trying to, to character assassinate. That's what trolls do. They'll look for anything to try to character assassinate. So they're going to say, well, look, such such dox me, this, that. Um, that. That to me is why doxing and trolling go hand in hand. Whether the yes. the troll is trying to dox uh, people, well, not, the troll not is trying regular, to, not to be regular doxed. trolling. The, the sub trolling. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're like, talking like, about normal, normal trolling. Yeah, no, no, yeah, normal trolls don't care about who you are. Normal trolls do not care about your personal information. They don't want it. They're not interested in that. Yes. They're just looking to give you a hard time. Bullies and people are actually trying to harm you. Those people are the ones that care. Yeah, and like I said, I don't go around trying to find out personal information about people. I really don't care enough about it. Um, so anybody thinks that I'm talking no, it's not or important. anybody, it's, it's not important to me. I don't care. Um, I, and I, I've actually had people send me stuff going, this is a full report on such and such or this person or that person. I'm like, whatever. I, I just I don't really care one way or another. Not my, not my thing, you know? There's also something to be said for when somebody um... – the thing is is that there are programs that require you to – to use your um to use your full name uh an example of this is paypal paypal uses your full name and you you have to use your full name to for it to, to to function the way it does um so if you spam out and use your uh use your paypal and give it out to anybody Anybody can find your name just by looking up your PayPal. They don't have to donate to you. They can just search it. Mm -hmm. I don't give out my PayPal information to anyone except for people who are commissioning me for business. So if somebody decides to then dox me with that information that they got through business, that is a different issue. That Yeah, I you gave mean, them that wait. information, but I gave them that information in confidence of a, like a, a general business contract. <laughs> So, so let me let me understand this. You don't sit there 24 hours a day and just go, oh, send me PayPal, 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 send me PayPal. You don't do that? Correct. Shocker. I do not do that. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, people have only gotten my PayPal in for, uh, information through uh, DMs specifically. My, pal, my PayPal is in the video description. There's some people that rather just do PayPal and they give me a dollar here and there or $5 or $10 and I thank them every time. Um, like for example, yes. Ryby Jenkins gave me a dollar the other day. I, I, I thanked her. Anything I get, I do thank people. And I noticed, you know, it's funny is a lot of people don't recognize those donations. Um, they take them for granted. And I think that Aww. that is one of the most horrible thing you can do when you're on YouTube and you're trying to provide a product and people, you know, take the time to, to, to appreciate what you're doing and say, you know, here's a couple bucks thrown your way and they just ignore it. I, I find that to be just distasteful for some reason so i tried to every time even if somebody sends me a paypal send them a message um announce it on air i want to recognize those things whether a dollar five dollars ten dollars it doesn't matter the amount is kind of irrelevant it's the fact somebody took the time out to actually give you some money and not because they feel like they're obligated to like again when you have to spam your paypal twenty four thousand times in a discord i'm sorry you're just a, i mean that's not how you should operate on youtube that is that to me is just like bet keen level grifting I, I i've never been able to understand that kind of mentality people want to be a part of things they want to be a member they want to donate because they like the product great but to sit there and just put it out there a billion times give me money i just it's not my thing man it's, it bothers me but real quick a uh, goddess comer says as uh, steve mccrane chess gonna say you guys call me jeff because that's my name and i introduce myself on such videos so my name is out there exactly um one yeah. of the big things with G-Man, G-Man used to lose his mind when people used to call him Gary, but that was out. That was his name. That's what he would use, just introduce himself as. That was on his PayPal too, but he was using it as a weapon, right? He was like, "Don't you know? Don't dox me." It's like, dude, nobody's doxing you. This is how you introduce yourself. Dean Esme does the same thing, right? Dean Esme's channel was called Dean Esme. That was the channel name, right? Yeah. There's also and something he, he said Colby, for yeah. But, yeah, and there's something to also be said for, look at the difference in the responses. Nobody has doxxed this person, but look at what this person did when I claimed someone was perpetuating a dox. They immediately tried to say that I was lying about something. But I never made that claim. Um, Helios410 said, I would like to state that a streamer can have a business Facebook under their stream persona and a real life private Facebook 
It is what it is when you link the persona to your real name outside of a private business and it is public. Correct. So there is something to be said for if I have um, how do how do I explain this? If I have a um, if somebody puts my real name out there, why? So I've now made my name public. You guys now know my name, that, and that's fine. But if somebody is, but but none of that ties to anything I do. I go by Chesh literally everywhere for everything. So what is the reason somebody would tell people my real life name to give you them try a to find dirt on who you. I am? Exactly. There's no reason for it because it doesn't apply to anything and gives somebody no information about my who I am and what I do online, which is the right. which is the environment that we're in. So there's no reason to give that information outside of maliciously to expect other. It's setting an expectation for other people or giving that information to other people who are going to do things for you. Yeah, you got to ask yourself. Go oh, elusive man for two says, "Did you hear I doxed Uni Rock? Crazy hashtag Chesh Hottie." Oh, <laughs> he, oh, I think he's got a mad crush on you. Uh, yeah. I'm okay with that. Whatever. You know what, uh, Lucy Man, you should have seen the pre-show. We'll have to like start doing that more. Um, <laughs> should I just do that at the end? Should I do that at the end of the show? Yeah, yeah. You'll get. Well, do a little um, taste. Um, I, I can't. Can you get away with like that with D Live? Like a little shirt on. Can we do? I, I don't know what you get away with D Live. Silliness. Know. See, all these these streaming things have like all weird things. So unless it's not like on like Chatterbait or something, I don't know what you can get away with. I, I don't want to get like you. Did Elusive Man but... ever? Did Elusive Man ever see my beer trick? I don't know if he was there when I did it. You mean putting putting a beer on your my bottle trick, drinking from between my boobs. oh I saw that yeah yeah I don't know if Elusive I don't think Man you saw, it. saw that yeah you're gonna how about with this Elusive Man versus Trina for your for your for you for, <laughs> for my death. hand in marriage <laughs> it's like a crazy okay so. You know, Oh, they're going to have to fight with AT2 because apparently me and AT2 are married. Um, does anybody have any other questions about... Apparently you're on your moon from what I understand. I, I, I thought oh, yeah, that was kind of cool. Yeah, your moon. I'm I'm a whole bunch of people too. Um, fascinating. Maybe I'm elusive, man. Whoa. Hmm. Plapot thickens. I think we pretty much covered doxing though. Yeah. To all properly right, so, dox, so, you need to have you need to have two at least two pieces of information out of three, but all three is the best dox. So, like, if you're if you're if you're trying to successfully dox somebody, you need their full name, a way to contact them that isn't public, and their uh, their address or like where they're found. Yeah, again, um, it's, it's the intent behind it, right? Um, but anyways, right. Also, uh, I I can just leave it with this on the doxing things. Nine times out of ten, if not more, those who complain they're be, they've been doxxed are doing it as weaponization. They're doing it as persecution to say, "Oh, look, I've been doxxed." Um, oh, come on. Look, let's be realistic. Most people don't give a shit who you are. Nobody gives a crap to, to really look into you in any way, shape, or form. If they have to deep dive and look up, and I have done deep dives on people, by the way, but I've never paid money for records or anything like that. Uh, but if you want to spend money for for records, you're allowed to. But what's the reasoning on it? Right. I mean, I've never paid a dime for anything, but do you want to you want to pay a dime for my my history? Go for it. But uh, I can tell you what you're going to find. You know, and people have done there's that. You know what? Thing. They found Bumpkiss. They found a bankruptcy yeah, in 2005, also, which I already said I had before my daughter was even born. There's also one thing that I do want to clarify. Just because you have the information does not mean that you've docked somebody. Let's say that yeah. somebody sends me a screenshot with a bunch of information about somebody. I now have that information. I didn't choose to have this information. Somebody sent it to me. I haven't by having that information. That does not mean that I have docked somebody. Just having the information isn't, uh, isn't enough. Uh, so I think we kind of beat that thing to death. Um, all right. So uh, one of the things somebody wanted to talk about, yay, was um, uh, an intrigued feline had asked me to kind of go over again. Oops. What is meant by claim? What is meant by beliefs? Now, you know, I've talked about this before. And this is going to kind of get a little complicated. So I hope people can bear with me. Uh, but I want to kind of explain the difference between uh, an ontological claim that somebody's making that they can demonstrate something versus a claim of belief to themselves. So let me give you guys some examples. If I say I believe the cat is on the mat, 
Bertrand Russell used these these types of analogies before. These are called truth makers. It is in the case that A is F, they call it, where A is an object, F is the universal. So it is the case that the cat is on the mat. If I say that I believe that, what I'm saying is I'm affirming that proposition to be true. Okay? And then you get into the justifications of why I believe that is the truth. I can actually see the cat on the mat, right? There's what's called object objectivity there. And there's a principle in, in theories of truth called the causal correspondence. And the causal correspondence principle basically goes, a belief that A is F is true, if on, only if it's true, if it is the what is being mapped from the ter terrain has that property that is, is, is the case, okay? So a long way of basically saying, if it is the case and my belief is mapped to that terrain properly, then there's a causal correspondence to it. Something is causing me to believe something. For example, if the, one of the examples they use a lot of times in, in, the, in the epistemological literature is you have a, a zoo and you have a zoo of horses being painted like zebras called a fake zoo. Now, if I look at one of these animals and I believe that this, this is a zebra that I'm looking at, even though it's a horse being painted to look like a zebra, I have a false belief. But am I justified to have that false belief? I could say that I am convinced that this is a zebra. I could be absolutely wrong, however, because there isn't a correspondence between the causal course, what's called causal correspondence between what is the case ontologically and what my brain is mapping. There's a disconnect there. My brain says there is a zebra there, but the ontology is the case that it was not a zebra. It is a horse that's been painted to look like a zebra. So in this case, the, the case, the causal correspondence fails. But I'm, I believe that is a, is a zebra. I'm not making the claim, though, that I can demonstrate to you that it's a zebra. That's a different claim. If I can say I can prove that this is a zebra, or I can demonstrate to you that this is a zebra, that is a separate claim from the claim that I'm making that I believe it to be the case that this is a zebra, even though it is a false belief. These are very, very different types of things in, in epistemology. Now, there are different ways of, of looking at theories of truth. One of the most simplest ones uh, is a reductionist approach. It's called deflationary theories of truth. These are mostly semantic ones, uh, Tarski's uh, like semantic theories. And they're more along the lines of reductions to very simple things. For example, when I say I believe I'm looking at a zebra. I am saying that there's a zebra there. That there's a fact to be mattered that they had called a truth maker, A is F, that there's a zebra that I, I am looking at. So if the proposition is there is a zebra in the in the zoo, I when I believe that to be the case, I'm making that statement. There is a zebra in the zoo. That's a deflationary approach. One of the simplest ways they actually put it is snow is white, right? So if I say I believe snow is white. That deflates to snow is white or uh, snow is white is true or it is true that snow is white. Those all mean the same thing. It is saying snow is white. Could you be wrong on this? Absolutely. Could you be convinced that snow is white and have it be incorrect? Absolutely. Could you have errors in the semantics in, in different th deflationary theories of truth? Yes. Um, I've talked about before what's the difference between what's called opacity and transparency when it comes to propositional context and changing the truth value of a propositional context. For example, uh, if I say the statement X is from Krypton and I instantiate X with one of two co-referential terms like Superman versus Clark Kent, we would agree that Superman and Clark Kent are the same person, right? But if I put Superman for X, that statement is true. Superman is from Krypton. If I instantiate it with a co-referential term of Clark Kent, that is still a true statement. Clark Kent is from Krypton. That means that there's an opaque content, uh, excuse me, um, uh, I have it backwards. I want to make sure I get it right. Um, uh, uh, I'm, try, I'm trying to think. I, make, I always get uh, it's confused. Um, uh, yeah, that, that, okay. So, so that is opaque because opaque doesn't preserve truth. So there's an op opacity there that just because you can stick one thing in there it could change and put the other thing there. Now, a transparent statement is it doesn't matter what you put in. For example, if I say, well, actually, no, that, that would have been transparent. I'm sorry. That's transparency uh, because the truth value is preserved. Truth value isn't preserved if I say Lois Lane can believe X can fly. If I instantiate X with Superman, then the statement Lois Lane believes Superman can fly is true. But if I put Clark Kent in there, that statement is now false because she doesn't know Clark Kent is Superman. So even though the co-referential the, that statement is opacity, has opacity to it. It's opaque 
because it changes the truth values. Doesn't truth preserve it? Transparent ones does. And so we're talking about truth theories. And we, when we start talking about deflationary theories, we start talking about semantic theories. We run into all these problems about what it means to be true, because in those particular cases, those are not truth preserving statements. But when I make a claim, I make a claim to myself that I believe the position to be the case. I believe the proposition to be true. That doesn't mean I have an onus or responsibility to demonstrate to you that it is the case, unless I say I can demonstrate it or prove it to you to be the case. This is where I think a lot of people make a huge mistake when they hear somebody say, this is, this is the case. Um, usually, usually when things like a correspondence theory or causal, um, causal theories, they run into problems when we start talking about things like numbers. Like if I say one plus one equals two, I believe one plus one equals two. To me, that's unassailable. It's indubitable. That's a fact. When, when you start talking about a causal relationship, what is, the, what is the object there that we're talking about that makes it the case that one plus one equals two is a fact, right? If there's a causal correspondence to be had, there is no object there. Even if you treat numbers as objects, like in mathematical Platonism, you can say the number one and two are objects. People do treat them as objects due to what's quite called Quine's dispensability theorem theory that we use them. Therefore, they're, it's indispensable that we should treat them as objects, but they're not concrete objects. I can hold this cup in my hand, even though you can't see it because it's green, um, but I'm holding something in my hand. You can at least see I'm holding something in my hand. That is an object that, that it is a truth of the matter that exists. So when I say I hold a cup in my hand, it's objectively verifiable that Chester and I can both look at this and go, yes, we're, there's a, a matter of fact of ontology to be had that we're both seeing a cup and it's true. But there's no numbers to be had. So causal theories can break down pretty quickly. That's why they have deflationary theories and they have these other types of semantic theories. But again, semantic theories has problems as well between opacity and transparency. So long story short, uh, when I say I believe this is the case, you can reduce that down to, yes, this is the case. Such and such. If I say, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll use the most common example that has been going around. Emails are real. That is my claim. Doesn't mean I can demonstrate it to you. It means that is a belief position based on the fact that I am convinced certain emails are real. That's a different claim from me stating to you, I know that they're real. Well, that's a different claim than saying I can show you that they're real or demonstrate that they're real or prove unequivocally they are real. Every time we make a statement about ontology, such as the cat is on the mat, that is a belief statement. So if I say Cheshire, the cat is on the mat. That is the same as saying, I believe the cat is on the mat. That is the same as saying it is a fact that cat is, the cat is on the mat. Or the cat is on the mat is a true proposition. These are all saying the exact same thing if you want to subscribe to inflationary theory. But think about it. Most people are not going to say much if I say, well, I believe the cat is on the mat. They're going to like, okay, that's your belief. Okay, whatever. I don't have to demonstrate to you my belief. I mean, most people on a condition of rationality would assume that if I'm telling you something that about my belief, it is the case that that is my belief. I think it'd be very disingenuous to say, well, you don't really believe that, right? We like to, to adhere to some things called principle of reason when we're talking about these topics that when a person has a, a, a discussion with somebody, they want to be reasonable, right? They, they're not going into a discussion to lie. So if I say, I believe this is the case, I'm doing so with an honest intent. I believe the cat is on the mat. Now, if Chess says, well, I don't believe you. Okay, whatever. I have no onus to demonstrate to her that whatsoever. None. It's my belief. I, she can ask me, are you justified to have that belief? Yes. Why are you justified? I see a cat on the map. Matt, there's an object objectivity to be had there. There's a condition of a truth maker, A is if, that there's a object that is, has a universal, which is on the mat, that we can both see and verify. Therefore, I am justified to say that the cat is on the mat. Do you guys see the difference between these ontological claims of what when we say something, when I believe something as the case, as opposed to, hey, the cat is on the mat and I could demonstrate to you. There's a huge difference to be had there. And I see a lot of people making this very fundamental mistake is that when they hear somebody say this is the case, they automatically assume there's an onus to be had to demonstrate it. Not there isn't. If I say, for example, God exists, right? This is the complaint that I have with atheists. There is no onus upon a theist to demonstrate that God exists when he says that. The, what he's saying is God exists. That is his belief. He believes he's justified to have that belief, but he's not giving you uh, the claim that he can demonstrate God exists. So when 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 an atheist says, um, well, theists claims that God exists, well, it's up to them to prove it. That's not their claim. That is a straw man.
This is the same thing that I see over and over and over again. You're a straw manning somebody when you say that they can actually demonstrate something versus vice them just making a statement, which is going to be in deflationary theory, merely their belief. Yeah, there's also a difference yes, with the, the intent of the conversation. But first, uh, Cat Medley for 199 didn't say anything, but thank you. Um, it, the intent of the conversation sometimes will actually uh, betray whether or not they are going to have to demonstrate their belief or not. It depends. If you're talking about somebody who's proselytizing, who's trying to convince people that their belief is true, then there's onus. But if you're not, yeah. if you're making a statement and you're only making a statement saying, hey, you know what? I believe that this is true, but I'm not trying to demonstrate it or I haven't verified it to this degree yet, then no, they're not. They're not required to make that that next step. In yeah, the that's called kind of a burden of persuasion, right? And by the way, um, I told yes. you, that's why I said, Jess, give me a few minutes here because when I get into that mode, I just kind of like rant. Uh, it's been a while since so I've I just muted. At a lot of stuff, I just so, muted. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, I see it quite frequently when people confuse uh, somebody's beliefs with a claim of demonstration or burden of persuasion. I have, if look, I, I have a cup in front of me, but you guys it can't also, see it because he, it has a green a, screen, right? An accusation is different. If somebody accuses oh, yeah, you of something yeah. or says this Big person difference. is this, then there's now you've again we're talking about the context of the conversation and how you've approached it. If you were making accusations yes. about somebody, then there's going you to be some onus. kind of onus to demonstrate that that is in fact the case or if not you can just dismiss it right but like i said i have yeah. a cup in front of me but then just nobody's to gonna say, believe well, you I, she can't no, see or nobody's going to you know? there's no reason for anybody to believe that your belief is accurate because right. as you were saying exactly. which uh with the clark kent and and uh, superman situation superman. there is they may be the same but you can reach the conclusion that clark Kent can fly through faulty reasoning like you can't draw that conclusion based off this information right well, yeah, so i can say i believe for, clark kent can fly yeah. but if i don't yeah but if i don't know that he's superman i'm that i might have conflated something right. that isn't isn't true i might still have the correct conclusion i could be right for the wrong reasons mm -hmm. but that doesn't Absolutely. make me yeah that's well that's the whole thing behind that on the opacity of a step proposition when lois lane believes Superman can fly is a, is a true statement, right? But as soon as I put that yep. co-referential term of Clark Kent into Superman, even though they're the same object, right? Same yep. object, A is F, where A is the object, F is the universal, let's say flying or something like that. Um, the truth maker has not changed, but the, the actual statement has changed from a true to a false because she doesn't know, look, Kirk, we're talking about early days. She doesn't know Clark Kent can, can fly. So by changing the object, you've now changed the propositional value. It is not truth preserving. That's called opacity. This is some of the problems with with um, semantic theories of knowledge or semantic theories of truth and what what it means to be true. Because the concept of what it means to be true is very very complicated. Because we we have a hard yes. time trying to develop a theory that's all encompassing. If there is such a thing, I don't think there is. I mean, is there such We're a thing? We're gonna have you to have to pick one yeah, and kind we'll of go with it. We'll have to go ahead and actually have a different, like a whole other conversation on a different day about truth and whether or not you can demonstrate when, when is somebody lying versus when is somebody is telling the truth? How do you tell the difference and how do you demonstrate it? It's not hard to demonstrate somebody lying, but it is hard to catch somebody lying. Two different yeah. things. It's yeah, difficult I mean, I'll get, to know I'll get one of my friends who actually wrote a paper on truth that makers. somebody is lying, but when they do, it's not hard to demonstrate it. You guys know MJ Dory? He, he's a philosopher. Uh, he wrote a paper on um, truth makers because I would be fascinated because it's very complicated stuff, especially when you're dealing with negative facts. Like, do they exist? Like, for example, if I said um, unicorns don't exist, how would you make that truth maker for that? Because if the, if if there's a truth maker that exists, like a causal theory, that, exists, that means there's an object of the universe. Exist. What's that? I said Mania exists, therefore unicorns therefore exist. Therefore golden unicorns exist. But there would have to be some kind of ontological truth make for that statement to be true. If not, then how is that statement true? Because it would be a negative fact. That's So that's kind of confusing. Well, well, how How is a negative fact something that's true? Um, yeah, well, like I said, it's confusing what exactly makes something true or not. Um, all right, yeah. Helios? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Helios far five said this is fair when you make a belief claim there is no onus to prove your belief but it is reasonable to ex be expected to provide the reason for belief it depends a, in a, on the in context a conversation, of the yes. conversation 
Yes, it, it depends on the context of the Generally conversation. Generally speaking. If you're expecting, yeah, if you're making an accusation or you're expecting other people to believe you, then yes, you you would be expected to provide that information. If you want other people to also believe what you believe, then you're going to need to provide that reasoning. But if you're if you're just saying, you know what, I think this, then people might question why you think that, but you don't have to necessarily tell them if you don't want to. It's right. not That's a what I said. I look, I, if I say, hey, I, you know, we're just talking about all kinds of stuff, and I'll send, you know, Steve I'm like, kicks you know puppies. What? Yeah, I, I believe I think, that I think Steve tr- kicks puppies. If I say I think Trump is a good president, and you say, why do you think that? I'm like, I really don't want to go to reasons. Okay, fine. The conversation moves on to something else. I have no onus to explain to you why I think Trump is a good president, but by the way, I don't. <laughs> Severe hypothetical. Um, but if that was the case, if somebody does say that, they, they don't have a onus to, to explain to you why they think Trump is a good president unless they're trying to persuade you. You can't you can't surprise, force surprise, somebody into a conversation. Nobody owes you anything. <laughs> they're making a self assessment there. They're giving you a self what's called a self assessment statement about their belief system. That doesn't mean they have to go into a dialogue with you about it. They're just telling you something about them, about their map of the world that they're telling you. That's it. They don't have to explain. Although it to I would you. say that um, in that, normal conversation, yeah, but, it would be bizarre for somebody to just make that statement and then just move on. <laughs> In Most like regular, like in, just in regular conversation, because if you're having a conversation with somebody, why would you bring that up if you're not interested in having a conversation about it? If you don't want to talk yeah, about something, I mean, like why I said, would you bring I mean, it up? These are generalities, um, but I see, I do see a lot of people putting uh, unfair burdens on people. I see a lot of people. Yeah, that's if you're, too, if like, you're well, projecting. You, onto, you believe God exists? Demonstrates God exists. That's not their claim. That is a straw man. That actually brings us to our next thing because we were going to talk about projection and how to recognize. Oh. Let's do it. Hey! So projection is essentially when you're doing something and you accuse the other person of doing it when they're not doing it. So if yeah. somebody says, if, if somebody says you're gaslighting me and you aren't, they might be tr- saying that to try to gaslight you. Or, or Weird, by the way, right? like Chess, do you know that gaslighting doesn't ex- even exist? It's not even a real thing. It's just made up. What? That's like <laughs> that's gaslighting, <laughs> right? That's, that's gaslighting. Ga- I mean, it's, it's like, yeah, it's gaslighting. Yeah. I mean, it's like what? No, wait, wait, no, it is a real thing. Um, yeah, people project all the time, and I see a lot of people projecting their own issues onto other people, whether it be narcissism, whether it be uh, uh, passive aggressiveness, whether it be whatever they whatever they seem to be throwing out there is almost, in my experience, a lot of projection, and you can see One the projection because you see how the people, people actually are. Good. I love it when people project passive aggressive onto me. I am not passive aggressive. I'm just regular. Nor am I, right? <laughs> yeah. exactly. I'm like, with passive you call me a whole bunch of shit, but geez, you call me passive aggressive. I really want to know what the hell you're talking about. What is passive aggressive about us? I'd really like to know. If anything, we're, we're just aggressive. But yeah. We're pretty what? straightforward. The- I have been yeah, sassy have to, before, but that's usually being sassy, not being not being passive you, aggressive. You got to ask them. You, you have to ask them. Like, do you have any idea what passive aggressive even is? I mean, to to, to say that either one of us are passive aggressive is just bizarre. Oh, we did a levels. whole episode on being passive aggressive. You can go check that one out later. Uh, don't forget to share the video, by the way, because uh, the algorithm hates us. Um, yeah, the algorithm hates so us. So there's something about so so when somebody projects is projecting one of the. Like there are people at this point where I'm at the point where if they accuse somebody of something and they can't demonstrate it, I think that if they aren't doing that thing currently, they either have in the past or are going to in the future. So if you get somebody claiming that, oh, you're just releasing these screenshots and they might be fake and we think you might have faked them and you have you know, no verification and you haven't verified them, but you believe them and they complain about that a bunch, even though you didn't do that thing, I kind of expect that they're going to do it if they haven't already done it and if they aren't currently doing it. Right? So if there's a screenshot, let's say, let's take a let's take a random example and let's say that there's a screenshot going around of one person threatening somebody else and that screenshot had zero verification and zero context. Do you think maybe that person that like the person who released that screenshot since they aren't willing to give any of that information and actually have everybody who would question that or anybody who is currently questioning that getting blocked you think there might be uh might be in it something 
This guy raises a little bit of a red flag. It's missing the C's, a little bit of a red flag. Um, and that person has, in the past, talked about how, oh, well, if you have screenshots, you need to make sure you verify them. You need to make sure that the uh, that it's not just faked, that somebody didn't just fake an account, that none of, like, you got to yeah, make sure this stuff. Yeah, we're going to a lot more of that verification stuff. You yeah. can, yeah, that there's something to be said for, it's really easy to see projection in hindsight. H hindsight is 2020. It's, it's very easy to see that somebody is projecting here, here, and here when they, uh, when they're, they begin doing that thing in the future. But you can kind of use that the, the way somebody has behaved because you can trust somebody to behave in a way that they've previously behaved. Um, at least to infer, it, it, to, to the degree of inference. To say that, right. okay, I mean, well, if they've projected about this thing in the past, what makes, why would I not suspect they might be projecting about this thing also? Or yeah, will I mean, I've gone eight years on YouTube. I've never faked a single screenshot in my entire freaking life. It wouldn't even cross my mind to do something like that. And the ones that bring those kind of things up to me seem like the per more kind of persons to be able to do something like that. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I do think things should be validated. Now, I know I know from experience people have gone and tried to pretend they're other people. I, I know for a fact somebody did that with me one time. I have the actual thing on G plus uh, yeah. and I'm sure a few people that have been around the community remember when people try to pretend me now I have some safeguards in place for that nowadays um, just right knows if she ever hears something that doesn't make much sense to ask you know for details and certain things but uh, you know it does happen people will still pretend to be me people will go into live chats pretend to be me people AT2 Jared I guess had it happen uh, people people are I've there are some despicable people yeah there's some despicable people out there just and I are not those kind of people I have never pretended to be somebody else making up the, you know, their name and, and say, Oh, look, I'm going to be Tom, Tom 34 B for the day. Right. To get him in trouble and to cause controversy. That to me is a, that to me is next level trolling. Those people are trying that, to cause yeah, harm. Those are people. Yes. They're trying to yeah. harm either the person's credibility. They're trying to make claims about them that aren't true. They're trying to, there's been screenshots that have gone out around that are out of context that I've straight up said, yeah, no, that was me. I said that. That's not what I was saying, but that is what was said. As you can tell, the yeah, context it, isn't there, so you have no idea exactly what I was or was not saying. But it it doesn't yeah. matter because I'm not I'm not going to argue with them. I did, in fact, say those things. <laughs> I, I do the same thing. Yeah. I'm like, okay, yeah. That let me let me give the context for that, right? Because there's a lot of people that will say, oh, like Steve said this in a, in some thing. Yeah, of course I did. Let me explain to you why. Uh, but if you don't come yeah. to me and ask me why it did, I did. Then you have no context behind it. Uh, and a worst case so, is, you know what? I'll say I may have, I don't recall it, but I, you know, I say a lot of things. But there's certain things I know I'll never say. I'll be like, no freaking way did I say that. You know, there's certain actually, words like water example, is I just wet. don't use. What? Somebody said what? water is wet. Actually, water is not wet. Yeah, water is a wetting agent. Yeah. <laughs> water itself but, cannot be but, wet. But, but can people see though the people that we avoid, the people that we have called out before? These are the ones that were actually pretend to be someone else. They would actually pretend to be Chesh or pretend to be me. Um, they would actually do things like fake screenshot. These 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 are the people that will use lies in order to fabricate drama for donations. I know for an absolute fact Who that I have Who needs to fabricate drama when you have people like this running around trying to fabricate drama? Yeah, I mean, we don't have to fabricate a goddamn thing. I mean, there's enough people out there that, that fabricate shit where we don't we don't even have to why would we bother i mean I, first of all i don't even like that kind of content i really strict, strict put strictly you know the science of philosophy crap but this channel you know somebody mentioned the other day when you going back to normal stuff and i'm like have you seen this channel this channel has always had drama on it for eight years going back to the g-man steve Ronnie, never had drama until showed up <laughs> yeah i mean I, I was like where have you been i mean this channel was predicated <laughs> on responding to people bullshit that's actually how this channel got started. It was Ken Hoven. It was uh, True Empiricism. It was G-Man. It was uh, those kind of people that I was like, oh, no, I'm not going to let you get away with your bullshit. So I was responding to, to they were putting out false information. I put it, I think false information is drama. If you have to fabricate stuff for narrative, that's drama. But responding to it, that's a whole different thing, right? So, But I thought it was just funny when people were like, well, let me go back to normal stuff. Hmm. So this haven't been around a while. We, we should probably say how do you actually how do you spy project projection 
before they've necessarily maybe demonstrated how wh what would be a reasonable way to suspect that somebody might be projecting rather that I, i'm not saying you take action and i'm not saying you condemn this person if you can't demonstrate it but what's the red flag look for what, patterns. what do you think you should look out for look, look for patterns um there's for example i'm not going to put up the person's name because i don't want to trigger anybody but there's a person that was out there that is extremely actually you know there's more than one so it could be a multiple i can think of three people right now come to mind instantly but somebody who's very passive aggressive and when a person's passive aggressive you can see this pattern repeatedly over and over and over again they don't stop being passive aggressive so when they're when somebody who's passive aggressive that you can see that pattern and they project somebody else saying well look cheshire is passive aggressive you know you know their projection because one that person has a history of being passive aggressive and two Cheshire is like anti-passive aggressive. I am anti-passive aggressive. We are aggressive if anything. There's like passive Neither there. Neither of us I mean, shy away from confrontation. We'll put it that way. <laughs> and, and 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 yes, by the way, Bullernator, um, not to not to put it out there. That was one of the names. That was one of three names. That wasn't my first name, but that was definitely one of those three names. Absolutely. Yes. But I'm not gonna put that out there. But Dave, you read Dave, my producer here, reads my mind. He really is God. He just messes me and he gave me a name. I'm like, oh yeah, that person is definitely passive aggressive. <laughs> if somebody says so that's that I say, look for patterns. If somebody says that you're doing something or says that somebody else is doing something and that person isn't known to do it and they can't demonstrate that the person is doing, there's a really good chance, even if it's not a pattern of theirs, that you have, like, let's assume you haven't seen a pattern from them. Let's say this is one of your first interactions with this person. And this person says, this person is this and does this. Oh, where? And they say they do and they can't demonstrate it. And then you go to that other person and, and look and see if they actually do that thing and they don't. That's a red flag. That's like, why does this person think that? There's a decent chance that they're actually projecting stuff that they would do in that situation. So when somebody says that, oh, these people have all these trolls that are doing this, that, and the other thing, and then you come over here and say, where are we telling anybody to go do anything? And what trolls? Right. <laughs> what are you yeah, talking oh, yeah. about? There, I, I gotta tell you, that's, you think... that to me is a reason to red flag and suspect that maybe that person actually would do that. I agree. I agree. I, I, look, anybody who says we have a troll army or, or we have trolls, uh, they probably do have trolls because I could tell you I have nobody. I don't. I, I hate Discord. I could tell you right now. Or they want to we, I, if they we don't have a, them currently. We were using a hypothetical the other day. It was like, well, if you ever hear Steve in Discord say something and just started to stop right there, she's like, wait a minute. If I hear if anybody say Steve was in Discord saying something, I'm going to throw the bullshit flag anyways, no matter what it is. Yeah, I don't, I don't care don't... what is said after that. It could be that Steve in Discord was was in Discord yesterday talking about atheism, atheism. versus agnosticism. Something yeah. that, that Steve talks about all the time. I'd immediately call bullshit anyway because I'm like, Steve was not in Discord. I do not believe you. Show me that he was in Discord. Because it's, I would I'm just immediately go to Steve much, right? and be like, "Were you in Discord?" And he'd be like, "I'm no, not exaggerating how much I hate Discord. I, I just that's not a that's not hyperbole. I really can't stand it. Anybody who knows me knows this. Okay, I mean Dave can validate for that easily. Uh, but but when people think that I have some kind of like troll on me, I, I don't sit in Discord. I don't sit in. There are some DM groups that are like six people in it. Um, I don't sit there and tell them what to do. They ask my advice because they think I, I I have some kind of you know insight on things because i do have my ear to the ground a lot of things but i never tell them what to do i mean even even there's one screenshot about me mentioning about controlling the narrative anybody who knows me knows how i use this word to, that for other people every time i've ever said the word narrative i'm always referring to other people spinning things to control the narrative is how other people will bullshit and then that's how i use that word anybody who knows me knows this right so they're when they see a screenshot and they take it out of context they, this is what they'll do. This is the kind of people that take things out of context and they'll project it on other people. So yeah, yeah so there's, I, if somebody I, there's says, no troll group. Actually, here. let's use that. Let's use that example. So if somebody says, takes a screenshot and it, you don't really have the context of what's going on with the screenshot and they say, look, Steve's talking about getting ahead of a narrative or getting, a, getting the narrative out there and controlling it ourselves. Um, yeah. But Steve doesn't do that. And so, and the context is missing. There's a reason to kind of red flag that and be like, why is this person saying that Steve, who doesn't, who's known for not doing this, and the context isn't there for this, can can you explain yourself? And they can't, then 
there's something to be said for maybe that person is somebody who would be pushing a narrative or running a narrative because Rejection. they're and they're literally using narrative to push narrative. It's what right? Inception time. We got Cat Medley for four ninety nine. Says keep it up. Yeah, thank you. I, I like appreciate the stickers. It. The stickers are so cute. He's a little pear. Cute. He's so adorable. Yes, but, she, um, uh, just quickly, by the way, Cheshire gets get, get Cheshire gets twenty five percent of the stickers too. They still count as a super chat. Oh, dang. She got paid for this stuff now, so you can't bitch. Yay! Not that she would anyway. Little Miss Betty Page, she, aka Tank Girl for two, says uh, Unicuck thinks anyone who disagrees with him equals a troll. Yeah, that's yeah. It, it, knowing the definition, uh, blah, 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 knowing the definitions of some of these words, how they're used in general helps when if somebody is you'll notice that if somebody is using a word and they just kind of throw it out there if you notice that somebody is using a word inconsistently like they're not using this, the word to mean the same thing over and over again like when i say troll like if i'm saying oh i was just trolling the other day it means that i I'm, i was joking around i was giving somebody a hard time um if steve says that these people were trolling me he's talking about the aggressive trolls not like it's the context of the situation um but they're still consistent even though we're using two different definitions, the context, the overarching context of the conversation demonstrates that these words are still being used consistently. So if somebody is just saying, oh, this is a person's a troll and that person's a troll and this is a troll, then either one, they don't know what the word means or two, they're pushing some kind of idea or trying to push a, 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 a larger, um, uh, I don't want to necessarily say say narrative. They're trying to push a, a bigger idea than what the word actually is. They're trying to project a larger a larger situation than there might actually be by lumping together people that are clearly not trolling and might be criticizing and people who are actually being harmful, trying to put them together to make it seem like there is more going on than there actually is. Um, so keep an eye out for people who are not using words consistently in, in their in their descriptions, or if they're not willing to define what they're talking about. So if I go to somebody and say, hey, you're, you're saying trolling a lot and, and you seem to be including a lot of different people in here, can you define, can you tell me how you're using the word? And if they use such a large definition that everybody's a troll, well, when everybody's a troll, nobody is. Uh, Ink Boy for yeah, two said, uh, how much of this is Boolinator getting, if any? Bool is not getting any of the super chats. Bool is getting paid a flat rate. Yep. And uh, I and if you want to, add, I mean, we won't go into details because he he does. I, the reason I don't go into details with Bull uh, on public is because he produces for other people and they can negotiate their own thing with him. And I don't think it's right for that to get out there. Um, but if you want to ask Bull in there, is he fairly compensated? Then he can answer that question if he wishes. Bull, are you fairly compensated for the flat rate that I've offered to you for doing the show? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, there you go. So. I, I, you get, but other people want to pay him more or less. That's up to him when he produces his other shows. But I made sure that he's fairly compensated for an agreement that we both mutually agreed upon. And the reason I, I came up with sentence for Jet Chesh was twofold. One, I got to pay taxes on Super Chat plus they take off the top and all this other stuff. And then I got to pay Dave. So I just gave her a flat rate. But I offered that to her, by the way. She didn't ever ask for it. Um, but I wanted to be very fair to her because I, we were waiting for so long for the Nance Sequitur show to come come back, which she would be, you know, 50-50 uh, uh, and everything like that, minus what, you know, Bullinator and stuff like that. But uh, I yeah, wanted yeah. to make sure that she had some kind of compensation, you know. I've been doing a lot of work in the meantime. Uh, Helios for five said, uh, best way to tell what someone does is to check what they assume that others do 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 to them. Sorry. Uh, key word in that statement is assume. Proof is not assumption. Correct. So you can actually look to see what somebody does and look to see the, the trick to, to noticing this red flag is recognizing when someone, whatever claim they're making about that person isn't accurate. So if I make a claim about Steve and Steve isn't doing that thing, why am I making that claim about him? And, and like, for what reasoning? And if I can't explain my reasoning, there's a decent chance. It's not 100%. This is just a red flag. This is not to tell you this is when someone is projecting. This is just to tell you when someone, uh, what to look out for, because they might be. It, it's just to give you the heads up to just be, be aware that that's, a, that's indicative. It's not conclusive. Um, I also want to address passive aggressive really quick because we haven't, we've talked about it a little bit. Uh, an example of somebody being passive aggressive is if you've kind of, if, if someone in your family is upset that they're doing the dishes all the time. So when they do the dishes, they're kind of like stomping around, but they never actually say anything to you. And they're just like doing the dishes and they're like, Ugh. 
I don't know why I always have, and they're like mumming themselves, like, why am I the only one doing the dishes? They're not, they're not confronting you. That's being passive aggressive. Or, or, you know, like, some, you know, like somebody eats part of your sandwich, um, you know, the, you, you, like if you're at work and you have a community refrigerator and you have a sandwich and then you just eat half your sandwich and you put a little sign on there, you know, would you like to eat that? I have to, that's kind of, that's passive aggressive, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's being so aggressive. Being like, in, 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 Bro, why'd you eat my sandwich? <laughs> Yeah, me, yeah. That's right. I'd be like, "Yo, bit, who ate my sandwich? We're gonna find you down. We're gonna hunt you down." That's just, that's not passive aggressive. Um, <laughs> oh no, Steve's sending threats to anybody who ate his sandwich. But but uh, you know, I see it all. I see a lot. Like some people will be like, they'll send something to somebody. Like, I'll, let's say I send something to Cheshire, and I'm like, "Hey, l- hey, Cheshire, let let me uh, send this to you." And I'm not saying this is having to do with anybody that I'm having a disagreement with. Uh, I just wanted you to read this about narcissistic personality disorder. Uh, but I'm not saying that it really has to do with anybody that we're having a discussion with. That's passive aggressive bullshit. Yeah, you'll see yeah, that a some, lot. With that's some right bull. Now. I was really confused for a minute because I went to look at the stream to see how long we were streaming for, and it said less than a minute ago. And there were, that were there were 70 people watching, and I'm like, that's not. I don't think that's right. <laughs> but this is my thing. Just didn't update. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't always. Uh, I, Hello, fact, um, 200 people. Widget is not, I just noticed, Bullgenator, your wi- the widget's not working for the, uh, the the live count. We have to update that or something. Oh, there might be a streamlabs mm. update. There might be a streamlabs update or something. Whenever you get a chance, because I just noticed it's zero. It's definitely not zero. I was just watching. sitting here um, being anyways. like, I'm pretty sure there's more than 70 yeah. people in the chat right now. That's yeah. Also, that's also the Twitch. Ironically, the Twitch symbol, not the YouTube symbol. Yeah, that's not the YouTube. Yeah, that's the wrong oh, widget. You, do you want me to get to the oh, right widget? Give me the right widget, and maybe the account will be right. Stop maybe. messing this it up. This is why Steve. I have a producer that knows what he's doing. Um, and I, and I'm not being passive aggressive. That's usually how this that was works. just aggressive. Steve, you're, he's like Steve. You're stupid. Give me the right widget. <laughs> I respect that. Yep. <laughs> Uh, it might have been passive if you had only said, hey, that's not the right widget, and then stared at him. <laughs> <laughs> do we Probably. have any, um, if anybody's got any questions in the chat, I'm going to start taking them now. I do have one from Trina, but we'll get to that one when we get closer to the end of the show. But if you guys want to put your questions in, please tag me so that way I can see it. <laughs> So if you guys have any questions about what we've been talking about or like if you want an example or to give us an example and we'll let you know if that is or is not. Um, just start putting your questions in now because we're we're getting close to being done because our next step is talking about the when do the principles stop applying? At what point do we do we give up on that? We're just like, we're not, we're not giving you the principle of chair anymore. I don't even care. But Steve, do you want to talk about that a little bit? I need to pee. Uh-oh. And by the way, we are going to be tre- streaming to yeah, Twitch right occasionally back. as well. So, um, yeah, we we're going to be doing multiple platforms. We're going to be doing restream with with Bullinator here eventually. We we haven't quite mastered that yet. Um, so the principle of charity, the principle of charity is usually what when we try to steal man people and we give them the benefit of the doubt that they want to have rational discourse and they're not lying to us, right? If if Bullinator says, "Hey, Steve, you know." It's, it's, I believe it's raining outside or something like that. I'm not going to question his belief. I'm not going to go, you know what? You really don't believe that. There's a principle of charity we had there. We are not. We don't sit there and question people when they tell us what they actually believe. That would be a waste of time to have a conversation like that. Uh, and if, if he says something like, hey, Steve, you know, I, I got a lottery ticket. I scratched it. And I won, you know, 20 bucks. Principle of charity, right? I'm not going to ask him to show the ticket. I'm not going to ask him to to verify it. I mean, because he's I, he's earned my, my um, trust, right? So... When you have these conversations with people, I start in with more of a neutral level with people I don't know. But I give them the principle of charity that they're having an honest di- dialogue and they're going to be telling me the truth and they want to have rational discourse. And then as it goes on, they either go a little bit higher, a little bit lower, right? If I see them start using fallacies, if I see them start doing dishonest, if I see them not answering questions, simply yes or no questions, um, then I start losing my principle of charity because I think they're a dishonest agent. If, the, if just the opposite, they're more than forthcoming with information, they have a ring of truth about it, then I give more principle of charity. And I'm more likely to believe things more and more. For example, if, if Bullinator says, you know, he won 20 bucks in the lottery, I'm not going to question it. If he won 100 bucks, wouldn't question it. He wins even 10,000 at this point. 
I'm not going to question it because I give him the principal charity because he's earned that with me. Right. So there's an agreement of, of, of principle that we give a person based upon prior history with them. And I think that that is perfectly acceptable. This is the same thing when people believe Kyle. They gave him the principle of charity on it, even though what they messed up is they gave him too much principle of charity, right? Because when there's a question to be had there, like if Dave said, hey, I won the lottery, I won a, I won a million dollars in the lottery, but I didn't even buy a lottery ticket. I'm going to be like, okay, Dave, that really doesn't make much sense, right? In that case, you know, I like to know more about it, right? I'm not calling him a liar, but I like to know a little bit more about what he thinks he won and how he won it. So when somebody like, you know, Kyle says, yeah, the money's all there, but won't show it to anybody. No, the Prince of Charity is no longer applicable because now you're dealing with uh, a substantial amount of money based upon somebody's mere word that's already been just shown to be, you know, um, a person who has lied before multiple times. Somebody who didn't have a lawyer, somebody who didn't have an accountant. There's questions to be had there. That neutrality for anybody has not gone below that level. So there's a time where principle of charity no longer applies. Trolls, to me, those principle of charity no longer applies. There's certain people, again, that I just will not give them a principle of charity. I will assume that they're just lying to me from here on out pretty much, um, unless there's reasons why uh, I think they're telling the truth. That is how I operate. I'm not ever telling anybody to operate like that. But I will not give people principle of charity or benefit of the doubt when they've shown themselves to be dishonest agents. And that is how I view certain people in the community that uh, have been dishonest to me. Katie, Katie Joy, Unirock, um, Kyle, uh, we call him Team Cuck, from, 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 that's what I call him now, KUK, Team Cuck, which by the way means penis in Swedish. Uh, I just found that out, slang for penis in Sweden. Uh, but can you guys understand about what we mean by principle of charity when you have an honest discourse we all should get principle of charity we should all should uh allow a person to have a, a dialogue with us assuming they want to be honest about it but as soon as they are unable to answer very simple questions and i'm sorry if you can't answer simple questions um i'm, I'm not going to treat you as an honest marketer and you can say well that's kind of you know you have you can't just always answer things yes or no i i understand that but you should at least attempt to when they're very simple questions you either believe the sky is blue or you don't believe the sky is blue. There is no middle ground to be had there. It's not that complicated, right? So when I see people try to avoid answering very simple questions, I'm not trying to, to pigeonhole them. I'm not trying to, to box them in. I'm not trying to play any game with them. You ask me yes or no questions, I will answer them the best I can. Even if you ask me, hey, Steve, have you stopped beating your wife? I'm going to say no. And the reason being is I, I will explain no because I never started being my wife because I've never been married. It's a malformed question called a complex question fallacy. I can explain it, but I answer the question. Yes or no? No. Um, I don't I don't even see people attempting sometimes to answer very simple questions. They try to obfuscate the conversation. They try to change it to something completely different. I don't have time for that. I, I don't think anybody else does either. So, Chester, I was trying to explain to people um, when I think principle of charity no longer applies to certain people. They can tell me the sky is blue. I'm going to go outside and look for myself because I don't give them the principal charity. I assume they are trying to have some kind of machinations. I assume they're trying to run some kind of strip. I assume that they are lying to me unless shown otherwise, because that has how far they have gotten below that middle line of, neutra of neutral by their past behavior towards me and other people. Yeah, so um, think? I think that the principle of charity, a part of that, because a lot of these principles are all tied into each other. A lot of it depends on previous interactions and what you've seen of that person in the past. As I said earlier, you can trust somebody to behave in a way that they've previously behaved. So if you approach, it, it, even without approaching somebody, if you if somebody says something about Steve, so let's say uh, somebody says, oh, Steve pushes narrative a lot. And you go, oh, okay. And you go and look at Steve's content, you can actually judge for yourself at, at that point if you decide to engage with Steve, whether or not you want to give him the principle of charity or the benefit of the doubt that maybe he doesn't do this. So if if I say, um, uh, let's say Steve does push narrative and you want to give him the benefit of the doubt, you can actually, without ever interacting with him, make the decision on whether or not he does that by actually looking at the content. So whenever you decide to interact with Steve and say, hey, uh, this person's telling me this, um, can you, and, and I saw you say this, and it did kind of seem like that was the case, is that, did, 
is that pushing narrative or is there something else? And Steve comes back with, oh, well, yeah, here, blah, 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 and explains the situation more to say that, no, it wasn't actually pushing narrative because of this, this, and this. Then you can give him the principle of charity that he did not actually think that he was pushing narrative, even though it may have been presented that way. And it's funny you mentioned that, that uh, by the way. Thank you, Dave. Dave fixed that thing, by the way. I, I gave him the right one because he wasn't passive aggressive about it. I like, can't stand passive aggressive. Uh, but, you know, like AT2 Production says, to be fair, I wouldn't answer that question with yes or no. I would reply, however, I never started. And that's fine. Look, and I get that. I'm just telling you, I, I find answering no because I understand it's a complex question fallacy. If somebody doesn't want to answer that yes or no, that's fine too. But they should at least attempt to explain why. Well, I can't really say yes or no because it's a malformed question, blah, blah, blah. And if, there, if it is a complex question fallacy or was called um, uh, guilt by implication, then that's fine because we can recognize somebody trying to run a guilt by implication thing or a complex question fallacy, such as have you stopped eating your wife. But most of the time I see people saying, well, that just can't be answered yes or no when they, they it can be answered yes or no. Um, I have a cup in front of me. You either believe that I have a cup or you don't believe you're a cup. That's that, Is there a cup? Yes or no? You know? Um, um, Athena says for two, uh, don't we all project to some degree? Um, and I don't think so. I, I mean, in different ways. I don't know what I project. I, I, I would say, Maybe? I, I I would say so. yes, but in different ways. So in this, in the situation we're talking about, I would say no. Um, however, um, most people impose their own experiences to understand other people. It's part of communication. So Maybe. if I'm talking to somebody, I only have a certain life experience and I have to apply that experience to what they're telling me. So in that regard, in, in normal conversation, yes, we do project to a degree because we have to, to be able to understand even what the other person is saying. Um, so when it, when it comes to either being sympathetic or empathetic, you, you would need to project to a degree because you have to project yourself into that other person's state of mind. Um, However, that's not the same as I'm saying that this person does this because I do it. It's a different kind of projection. So I would say yes in one regard, no in the one we're discussing. Hopefully that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, 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 I try to look at the like, for example, like w when we're talking about principle of charity and yeah, Saka's right on. The principle of charity is, is a form of steel manning. You, you're looking at the most rational way to, to look at an argument, right? The best possible light. You're giving them principle of charity. You're assuming they're not... Um, trying to run a straw man argument, right? You're, you're, you're giving them the best possible yes. interpretation of their argument, right? Totally street still manning. I expect that for, to people to give me, I project that in other people, right? When I'm talking to Cheshire, I would expect her to treat my arguments in the best possible light and not try to straw man me. But other people, I don't have that with, they really do go out of their way to try to straw man me rather than try to give me principal charity and steal man me. Like for example, we've seen it all the time with, with the whole atheist thing. People will look at my arguments and took the, take the least possible charitable interpretation, right? Yes. Always, and um, it's, it's weird because they have no history with me. I'm not a dishonest person. I don't sit around and lied for donos, right? I don't tell you people what I, what you want to hear. I tell you what I think, and then you can evaluate it and tell me what you think, right? But I do have people, for some strange reason, automatically give me no principle charity. They do not give. They do not steal man me. They they will try to straw man me. And those are the people I don't really give much time to. And they have no basis for it. Cheshire is saying, well, look at priors. Well, I have a thousand videos out there. Go look. What I mean, what priors are they possibly yes. looking at not to give me the best possible interpretation like I would give with them? If Cheshire says something to me and she gives me an argument, I'm going to steal man her argument. I'm going to like, okay, let's look at it from the best possible light. I'm not going to go, Cheshire, you're lying or or worse, you know, Cheshire, here, you know what? Your argument's this, this effigy that I'm going to create and then try to destroy that effigy. Because half the time when people do that, all they're, they're saying to you is, hey, you know what? We can't really attack your actual arguments. We're going to make this effigy and then burn down the effigy, which is really what straw man uh, fallacy actually is. And I have, been, have I, I see that so frequently. I'm like, oh, my God, that's not my argument. Why do you keep doing that? I have. I, I mean, well, so often that happens. Said... It's ridiculous. Yeah, there's also something to be said for when somebody, if somebody's going to continuously either not give you the principle of charity or not steal men, because you could, you could essentially say that 
uh, you can use someone's past behavior, and especially when you're dealing with somebody who is in the public eye or, or posts things publicly, you can use that. It'd be unreasonable because these situations don't agree with, the, don't exist in a bubble. So if I have this experience with somebody over here, and now I'm interacting with them over here on the, like on this platform versus this platform, it's not reasonable to expect to treat them from zero on either one. So at no point should you ever be treating somebody like me or Steve or um, pick somebody, anybody who has a YouTube channel. At no point are any of us, should any of us ever be treated as if we're from point zero. Now you can give us the benefit of the doubt and grant us that charity as if you're talking to us from point zero. But that doesn't mean you've forgotten anything that we've ever put out. So you can say, yeah. like, you know what, for this, this, for the sake of this argument, I'm going to say, you know what, uh, none of the stuff that you've ever done counts right now. I'm going to ask you directly these questions as if I have never heard about you before, and I'm granting you that charity, as if you're, you are being honest. But if you know that somebody like uh, Mike Cavanaugh, uh, it, this, this flat earther who, who's been around for a long time, you're not going to go into a conversation with him expecting him to be an honest agent. You're not going to grant him that principle of charity. Now you might decide to grant charity about the argument that the person is making, but that doesn't make, that doesn't mean, oh, you're now an idiot and don't know who the person is that you're talking to. Yeah, well, like you said, things don't work, exist in a vacuum. So we do have to take priors into account. But there are times we can say, look, I want to, I'll give you a tabula rasa. I'll give you a fresh start, you know, and let's have a conversation based upon the argument and let's see where it goes. And as soon as that argument starts getting straw manned rather than steel manned, yeah, I'll start losing principal charity. Um, or if they start using fallacies or if they start making things personal. Uh, there's a yeah, huge difference between attacking the argument that. versus attacking a, a person. Huge difference. You, you should start questioning somebody's motivations at that point because now at, you're ta you're talking about now this is going to change per person i've seen like an intrigued feline an intrigued feline is probably the most charitable person for any argument i have ever seen them interact with on twitter the most charitable you could possibly be continuously through the whole thing it's amazing to watch and i definitely recommend watching that kind of discussion it's quite fascinating um and very well argued um so there's reasons to be charitable and there's reasons to drop it. Sometimes it's reasonable to be like, you're just doing this now. And where you just, you're, you're no longer giving them the principle of charity and you're saying, you are doing this. So you can, you, at that point, you're you're saying that I've granted you this principle. We've had a little bit of a discussion and now I'm telling you that this is no longer the case because, I, and I'm going to demonstrate how you're not, you're no longer being an honest interlocutor. Yeah, because you definitely, when you're given the principle of charity, you, 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 you're, you're kind of assuming that the person is not being dishonest. You're not, they're not having illogical fallacies, right? They're not going out of the Here's way. Here's a really good example. Man. We have a previous video right now. Here, there's a good example in the chat right now. We have a previous previous video out right now talking about the principle of charity and what we're discussing today. A lot of you guys are aware of it. There's somebody in the chat right now continuously trying to correct us, and that's what in saying that we're using the principle of charity wrong because we're not using their definition. We're not yeah, using and that I definition. That too. We're, we're using not something specifically. Yeah. yeah, they're not giving us the principle well, we've of charity. Already, we've already acknowledged principle Without, of charity is steel manning. Uh, yes, and yeah. keep in mind that we've actually already discussed this in this chat, and they're still in there yeah. saying that we're incorrect to be using it well, the way and, we're and, using it. And this person is also a known contrarian, which is why I don't have dialogue with them any longer on these topics. Yeah, for this it's because it's a waste of time. This is what they've done. It's a waste of time. Because, um, they're not yeah, giving exactly. us principle so, of charity. They're actually trying to correct things. They're not needing to be correct because I know what principle of charity correct. is. I'm not an idiot. Yes. But why and would you need to correct me on things that don't need to be corrected unless you're the, trying to be a contradiction? You know, you try to be um, a contra contrarian. So I don't waste time. If with you that do kind not, of other people can. If by you the way, legitimately by the way. do not understand what we're talking about, even though we've explained it in this video already, yeah. please go watch our previous video about the five C's, and then you can come yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. Again, like I said, if somebody, if, somebody, if, if you think they were using it wrong, do your own video on it. Go ahead or talk to Cheshire. Yeah, go for it. I, I, I knock yourself out. Don't. But, uh, no. In fact, guess, don't talk to me. I would rather you didn't. In fact, please go away. There you go. That's fine too. As far as I'm concerned, you are a waste of my time. And I've had, I have attempted to have conversations with you That's in the true. past, and you have you done have. nothing but waste my time. So I do not care. You are a condescending, misogynistic prick. As far as I'm concerned. 
One sec. And, you know, like I said, you know, that's my I, I don't, opinion. It, and it's funny, it's because Reg invited him in the other day, too, um, and he wasn't able to do it. But it is getting to the point where uh, I don't see any reason to carry on a dialogue with somebody who's just going to be a contrarian. You know, it's well, just at this point, no it's dishonest. It is at dishonest. this point, it, there's, yeah, there's a difference between be like, so if you want to play the devil's advocate, that's fine. Playing the devil's advocate is fine. But if you are corrected multiple times and you continue to play devil's advocate with the same point, you are no longer being honest because it's already been clarified and it's already been addressed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know why anybody would think that we're making, again, I know what principle of charity is. I understand it's steel manning. It also deals with the best interpretation that the person is not giving you a logical fallacies. If you want me to even look it up, uh, it, I, I, I just was looking at it the other day in preparation. Uh, principle of charity in Wikipedia even says, in philosophy and rhetoric, the principle of charity or charitable interpretation requires interpreting a speaker's statements in the most re rational way possible, and in the case of any argument, considering its best, strongest possible interpretation, in its narrowest sense, the goal of this methodological pr principle is to avoid attributing irrationality, logical fallacies, or falsehoods to the other statement, which means you don't oh, think hey, they're lying to you. So, so everything I I've said is exactly how I interpret the principle of charity as given by Wikipedia. So I don't know what exactly I'm wrong about. Hey, Steve, I got a question. Yeah. Is this not a projection? Because that is what people say that you do when it comes to uh, atheism and agnosticism. You say yeah, that say other people have to use your definitions. Yeah, well, he says he was correcting you. And I just think he's he has a thing against you. And, and, I, and I don't like it, to be honest with you. I don't like the way he's treated you. Um, You're saying the same thing I am. How is it only against me? Yeah, that makes I don't no know sense. what she's saying exactly the same thing I am, right? Exactly. I mean, that's some misogynistic bullshit. Uh, I hit the thing on my chair and I shrunk. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit tired of it. Uh, so that's uh, uh, I, so. can we go ahead and say that that's actually straight up dishonest to say, uh, oh, I'm only disagreeing with Chesh, even though Steve's saying the same thing? I think so, because I don't see you saying anything different from me. And all it is is causing contention. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I did take away your, your wrench um, because I, I just don't think you're, you're, I don't want you to be a mod any longer, no offense. Yeah. Anyway, so how because does I, I don't to... like contrarians and, and I don't like people telling people that they think that I stole the GDC. Um, that's bullshit. And you know it, Sokka. And you said that the other night to Reds. You said that you guys and I were lying. I don't want, you, you know what, you could, you could, you also did nothing all you to want. demonstrate. You but, also said nothing to demonstrate yeah. that in the in the in that chat that night, even though you couldn't right. come in, you still never typed or explained anything you had to say. Right. And that's on it. top of it, we've already gone over how we are not going to allow people to just come around and say people are liars. Right. You can't and do so that. I, I, I have a higher standard. If you my, show my up and say you're lying, we're not gonna waste our time with you. You can't be a And I've already, I've already explained how I do my mods from now on because of the incident we have with Unirock. Um, yes. So I that was not, also I, like, people can disagree, night. but they, they they call me a liar and you're a mod. You're not going to be a mod straight up with that. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. But you can disagree and all you actually, want. Actually, interestingly that's a, enough, if you, if you say that I stole the GDC. You can go fuck yourself. Yeah. So on top of that, we can also say that uh, the you said um, Red was wrong. Red was not wrong. But anyways, Saka, I you know what? Whatever. Saka, We're not going to really waste our time. time for you. I'm just going to put you. This is trolling. You right now this, I, this, this is trolling. Is trolling. Right. This, this is trolling. trolling. I don't have this time is for exactly, it. yeah. This yeah, is exactly so. what we're talking about. This is coming to talk about a topic that is not what the no, topic is, and trying to bait it. a response, trying to right. bait responses by this just is what making random for recently. We've seen Saka do this, and I don't know why he decided to become a troll. He's done it on Twitter. He did it. He's done it for for several Athena! months now. I've given him the benefit <laughs> of the doubt, you know, because I know Saka a very long time. But he's become a, a, a he's become somebody who just wants to listen to response from people. I don't have time for that, Chaka. I really don't. Yes, and, and you say actually, that, it was that you also say that Red was wrong the other night. Come on, that was ridiculous. Red was not wrong. The story he said yeah, was correct. In, and intriguingly, yeah. I also says, "Yeah, I that know. was gaslighting." And oh, no, and that was gaslighting. Yeah, yeah. I never said so, that because I, I didn't say those exact words. Yeah, gaslighting. So no offense, Chaka, but I'm I'm over that kind of shit. Uh, I don't. I don't think it's appropriate and for you to gaslight and to say Cheshire was saying something different for me is wrong. Saying that Rez was wrong was, was, you know, was incorrect. And I just don't need mods like that. No offense. So 
if, if yeah, you feel so persecuted you, uh, by it knock yourself out but it's you're not you're not you can still come around don't I'm cry not, about yeah, it on twitter can. nobody I cares i haven't <laughs> given you i mean i haven't blocked you i just give you a five minute time out to kind of let you think for yourself stop being such a contrarian is nobody wants it it's just annoying yeah okay so yeah. um one of the questions that we got is from Helios. Um, uh, can you lose any other of the principles of charities? Like, can you lose the principle of cookies? Yes. So this actually applies to every single principle. You can choose when to and to not use these principles in your conversations. And how usually it's good to apply all of them when you're either analyzing something or so looking at something somebody said or whenever you're first approaching somebody. It's usually best to do that. But I can admit I've done that specifically on purpose and completely dropped cookies entirely. A really good example is if you look at a conversation that was going on between Sarah Michelle and Adam Friended on this channel. They were having a discussion and it was a uh, it was a jump off between with a two hour debate that they were having. And I came swinging in there because they had already been talking for they, they had a two hour stream and they were like an hour into that one. And I came swinging in like, hey, what up? It's me, your boy. Go f yourself. Because the, I was just like, we need to, we need to kick this, we need to kick this up. And I legitimately typed in the chat, Steve, in all capitals. And Steve was like, okay, get in here. So I specifically did not use cookies to approach Adam because we were going in circles. Mm -hmm. But what I did immediately afterward is I came in there and I basically just gave him a one-two hit really hard. And he was like, whoa, what the hell? Was that fair to him? Maybe not. Was it funny? Yes. Did it get the conversation rolling again? Absolutely. Did it make the stream more interesting? Yes, which is what I was called in to do. Now, what I did do immediately after, because he was upset, I was like, okay, okay, yeah. you know what? Yeah, I was being a bit of a dick. I'm sorry. I do want to make sure, because he was like, I'm going to leave. And I'm like, oh, that's fine. I do want to clarify something before you leave. And I applied all of the principles right then. When I, and I said, listen, I just want to make sure I've been listening to this for two hours, three hours at this point, and I just want to know if I've got your position correct. So I'm going to describe it to you. And can you please tell me if I've gotten everything wrong? He was like, yeah, all right. He didn't think I was going to be able to do it, which I mean, to be fair, totally reasonable. But then I laid out his argument completely concisely and to the point exactly. And he was like, that's actually correct. I'm like, fantastic. This is actually a really interesting place to take it. But I think there's a there's an issue with the two kind of people having the conversation right now because you're talking about different things if you want to go look at it it's there it exists I, I don't remember what it was called but they're talking about something to do with the bible i don't remember but there there are reasons to not especially when you're running a show there are reasons to not use these principles i gave the principles of charity to science first on on lucid man they didn't apply them to me at all none of them so clarification is something that you can you can drop clarification at some point if you know what somebody's saying you don't necessarily always need them to clarify at some point if somebody says something and they say something and it's pretty awful or it's pretty like just demonstrably wrong there's no reason to give them the the principle of cl uh, of clarification because th they're factually incorrect so if i say the sky is green like lime neon green i'm factually incorrect you don't necessarily need to ask for clarification i might clarify after the fact i might say that oh i have these tinted glasses that well then why am i saying that i'm just being a jerk <laughs> yeah I, you know it's, it's fun. i like the cookies thing too and i think the cookies actually make sense when you when you talk about the five c's but there's an oh there's, there's something, these are not absolute standards right these are things that i suggest that just i suggest that we came up with that we think makes sense to use in these conversations they're not something that everybody has to or you could take it you can leave it i you know these are things up to you they're, they're tools they're guidelines that you could use that's all um but i think they do make sense and they're just you know most of them are just based upon grace's maxims for the most part uh, and just kind of common sense but you know, I think that you go into a conversation, and you bring cookies. It's a hell of a lot better conversation than than what happened when Science First jumped into this dialogue with um, Cheshire on uh, Lucid Man's channel when it was just, oh my God, what an asshole! There was no cookies. He brought shit. He bought a bag <laughs> of shit and said, "Here's a bag of shit, Chesh. Smell it before we have a conversation." This is exactly what he was doing. So he tried That's not to cookies. do. 
So well, you know, but, but, the, but I'm glad that he did because it exposed himself as somebody who's not somebody who's anybody should have an actual conversation with. He's not capable of it. Yeah, he's not capable of the conversation. I legitimately the thing. The, here's why I can tell you that he wasn't capable of the conversation. I'm the one who called him in to talk. I'm the one who made that offer. He came swinging in and he kept going. I had to request Steve to mute because this dude's hate boner was so out of control that he could not talk to me without trying to address Steve. And he had to interrupt you every two seconds. He won't let you even finish a, a, a thought, yeah, right? Yeah, that's, that's pretty that's disrespectful. Yeah. <laughs> oh, tell, tell um, Teddy so, the problem. Tell, wait, I want to say, tell Teddy says, sorry about your little problem with the uh, intro. My bad. Um, about the score that that wasn't your uh, uh, yeah i didn't uh, think about it man it's just, and it just started coming up i and i forgot to even ask or to bring it to your attention because i was going to fix it myself um or figure out something for it so no i appreciate you wholeheartedly tal you know i love you brother um it was it's just it's just recently something that actually came up to be an issue is that any video that i have with that intro um becomes instantly uneligible for monetization so it's not even demonetized it gets the red uneligible so yeah so um for when it, so when it comes to clarification you, it's as long as you understand what that person is saying and you take it as what they're saying then yeah you can drop the principle of charity so you can you can essentially say that no at this point or sorry of of clarification because they don't you don't need them to clarify and if so, some people utilize the principle of charity to act to say horrible things and then say oh well that's not really what i was saying and at that point are they if you know that they're not then you don't have to grant them that that's actually what they meant because they're lying to you at that point and you can demonstrate that through the principle of charity from before because they've already lost that charity what exactly. about context steve what about context is there any point where you lose the principle of context no i still think you should always try to take things as contextually as possible i mean but again uh we don't always know the context of certain things I, if you just see something that has taken like very small myopic view of something it's hard to know what the context is for that the problem what i see is that when people don't know the context they fill in the blanks with narrative right so obviously we know people that that excel at this this is what they do they don't know the context so let's make some shit up and then get all everybody stirred up and have donations you know because hey i'm gonna give you entertainment by making shit up then you give me money for it that's their style i don't do that i want to know the context of certain things and i will ask people well Okay, this is what it's saying. Again, I, I tell people the difference between locution, illocution, and perlocutionary things. Locution is what's being said, but the illocution is the, is the context behind it, right? Very, very what similar to what's being called... said versus what is meant when they say it. Yeah, to some degree. Um, and so there's, when we're, we're looking at something, it's like, well, what is the, re what's the, the context behind the stuff is very important. But there's also something like denotation versus connotation, which I haven't really talked about before. But denotation, deno, deno, uh, denota, uh, a denotation is the more of a definition of something, how it's used grammatically as opposed to the connotation. So if I say something along the lines of, um, hey, you know what, that, that, um, that the ending of, of um, uh, what's that show, uh, Game of Thrones was brutal, right? The denotation of the word brutal means that there was actually, you know, a fight and blood. It was gory. It, it had some kind of brutality to it, right? That's a denotation. But the connotation is was it was just you know epically an awesome awesome show right there's a the, the connotation isn't the same as a denotation so what context is there when somebody says well you know that show was brutal last night are they meaning it like literally there was uh, by the denotation of the definitions of the word how it's used grammatically that it was a brutal gory show and, and limbs were cut off you know like 300 or whatever or was it just you know a brutal ending because you know somebody got owned or something or it's just like really killer these are the difference in context right so you you have to be able to like look at something and go maybe there's more to it i try to always give context uh i don't really know of a time when you wouldn't want to know the context of something properly unless you just at that point don't even care enough for the principle of charity when you're dealing with somebody who's so dishonest you're like you know what I, I don't even want to know the context because i don't even care any longer but that's that's up to the individual i don't know if i can get to that point even even it's somebody that i don't like I still want to. I still want to know the context by which they said something. If if somebody says, "Hey, you know, hey, Steve, this person said something about your daughter." Okay, what was the context of it? You know, there is not everything about uh, my daughter. If you mention my daughter's day, you know what? My, you know, Steve's daughter seems like a really cool, you know, uh, kid. Okay. An in, an intrigued feline has a has a decent example. Um, at one point, um, 
somebody was asking uh they they asked me in dms about more context to some picture that was floating around and they no longer needed the context to be provided by that other person a different example of not granting somebody the charity of or granting somebody the principle of of context is that when they say oh that's out of context and then don't explain it or refuse to explain it right because at that point they're not providing you the context so they're just yeah, saying they, it's it, out of context without even being context, able then. to explain themselves. Yeah. So if they don't, then there's no, you can't trust that it is in fact out of context, especially depending and I say on that who all you're time, talking though, to. I? If I say, yeah. look, that was out of context, let me explain to you what the actual context. I did the other night when I did the email things, when people were like, well, Steve said you, you, he held money. Well, I explained the context of one thing and the context of the other. It made sense because that's what I was actually thinking. And so there's exactly. a context we have there. People don't know the context. They just say, well, Steve contradicted himself. Bullshit. If you know the context, it clearly is no contradiction. Uh, this is what I'm saying that I don't think personally, I don't see why you would ever lose context or why you would not want to know the context unless you're so apathetic. You just don't care any longer. Maybe. I mean, I, I'm happy to get feedback on that. I, I yeah, really... sometimes it's, uh, it gets to the point where, okay, let's say, let's take um, the screenshots of uh, that we've never been able to confirm about uh KJ, we've we have not been able to confirm those one way or the other. Those have not been verified one way or the other. Maybe we'll be able to in the future. Maybe not. At this point, the context of those doesn't matter. There's there's enough stuff that she's done recently and that she did not long after we were finally able to be like we don't we don't know and we're not going to get that information where she was doing that exact thing to other people lot like in her own public texts these the context of these are no longer relevant because they're no longer needed for the argument now yeah. they, they there's more recent more publicly available information that that these don't need to be verified because the point now stands because of these things that are yeah that and it goes back now. to my beliefs right i'm allowed to have my beliefs if i'm convinced of something that's my belief uh, i don't have to justify it to you i don't have to justify it to myself and i certainly have no onus to show that this is the case these are belief right. claims. They're not claims that I can show somebody that this happens. Well, to be yeah, the case. you're not it's trying to convince true. other people. It's it's once you start trying, yeah, to, convince trying to convince other people. Anybody. Yeah, if you're I was trying to convince you know somebody, I then I would at least give my I reasoning. Been able to verify. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I'm happy to try to convince people, and I gave people my reasoning. But as soon as I hit a dead end, I couldn't do anymore. However, I will tell you this: Person M is not Kim. Person M did call us the other day live when we were on M air. So when people were saying, well, Kim was Pearson M, they lied about that because they knew better. They know that wasn't that. That was running narrative, right? And did they ever apologize for that? Nope. No. Nope. It's now been demonstrated that Kim is not Person M. Actually been demonstrated in evidence that this person, Person M, who we who we know her name is Lori, not Doxing, because she's put it out there now, um, is not any one of us. We, we were never involved in any of that. We were basically after the fact kind of thing and people that are brought in but we had nothing to do with the actual screenshots whatsoever and so anybody who involves us in it they're lying to you from the get-go because it this has been demonstrated that they're that narrative they were pushing was bullshit yeah this is an example of what i was talking about the other day as well as in my tldr video when they're building narrative off of their own bullshit their own claims that have been debunked so if they say that oh Ch steven chesh created these screenshots and we show that no we didn't nobody either created these screenshots or we don't know where these screenshots came from it was not us and then they go off and spin and say later on that oh chesh is a hacker because she faked these screenshots before well we've already debunked the original one why are we like we're way off over here on and we leapt off of something that we know is demonstrably not the case yeah and where's the principle of charity where i mean it's like do we have a history of lying no nope. I, I, have, I have a standing thing. You think I've lied? Come in and ask me. Talk to me. Show me that I lied. Show, Bull show me that Bullinator's lied about something because Bullinator's being accused of lying. Yeah, Go people ahead. are show going me off on Bullinator lying. I'd love Based to see on that. what? Based you know? on what? Now, now, let's be realistic here. I mean, if any, if somebody says Cheshire lied about something, uh, there might be a little part of me that goes, okay, I've been something minor because, you know, Cheshire had a little bit more, she think, you know, that she, she, she'll do more white lies kind of thing, you know, maybe. Where? Like her, Show me one. more flexible, but I still like to know, right? I'll put it this but, way. Steve Steve doesn't, Steve might have never seen me lie, but because of Steve's perception of me, he might think it's more I, believable that right. I've lied compared to Bull. Right. That doesn't mean right, I exactly. have lied in the past. I that have just not seen her that, lie, right. Yeah. 
But I know she's probably more willing to than Bull, who probably isn't capable of it. Potentially. Maybe. Yeah, potentially. Maybe. Right? But again, it's more when people believable. Bull, they're like, go ahead, show me. I love to see this. And you know how many people have tried? Zero. I, who's tried to show that? I, I, I don't think anybody has. And no, I don't, I don't even know how many people have tried to show that I've lied. Even though, when it, whenever they try to show that I lied, they come up with some creative bullshit that it is like, are, are you serious? This has already been explained a million times. There's no lie there. I don't go around lying to people. It's just not my nature. I have no reason to. Everything I've said has been true. By the way, when I showed the emails, they, they validated everything that I've ever said. I mean, le- yep. just straight up validated. This is exactly what I said from day one. Shocking, I know, right? But that's what you're saying. You have priors with people. They've earned your respect. They've earned your your principle of charity. Yeah, they're well, earned well, let's these things with me. Bit. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. So somebody might be granted more principle of charity over somebody else. Why or why? So you might give Bull more charity than you would me if somebody comes to you and says, "Well, Chesh lied about this." You might still be like in your brain be like okay well maybe she did can you give me more context whereas you might respond to bull with yeah right <laughs> so uh, why and and why is that reasonable yeah and, and like i said i think it's perfectly fine to to do that although um we do got to wrap it up here in, in like two minutes uh i don't think principal charity should extend beyond common sense for example when somebody says they have sixty thousand dollars sitting around that they're going to pay me and you don't ask them to see it they're you're, you're 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 just being stupid at that point that's not principal charity you're you're believing somebody based upon uh gross misinformation when that person has had no uh history of telling the truth they've had quite the opposite history of, of lying so correct i think there's yeah, time to can... like uh it's reasonable to, to say to look I, I think somebody... we need more evidence for something Go ahead. The principle of charity ex- essentially is extended to the degree that you feel comfortable doing it. Sometimes it's just for the sake of the conversation. If you want to go further than that, then you can base it on the way that person has uh, acted in the past. How has some, you can go and look at, if somebody makes a claim about us, if somebody says like, oh, Steve, does, Steve's a liar and does this. You don't have to ask Steve. You can go and watch Steve's videos and see if Steve, if somebody's like, oh, Steve and Chesh are horrible liars and they do this and that and the other thing. They've doxxed, they've done this, they've done that. Go and watch our videos and, and see if we behave in that way. Do we behave in that way? You can actually, even without the person giving you any more information, because maybe they refuse to. If you're like, where can you show me where? And they say, well, they have. Go look. You can. You yeah, can I love actually that. go, go look. look if you want to. Out there. They give you some video. Yeah. Go look. Steve's yeah, exactly. Go look. Oh, so okay. if you want to oh. say, if you want to say, like a really good one that I see happen often is people will post this for the RP stuff. People will post a video not by Steve saying that he is he's RP. He's an apologist. Well, if you want to know, go watch ask Steve. Me. Go watch me. You don't even exactly. have to ask him. Don't. In fact, don't ask him. Don't. Just watch don't what have I your, put out. Don't, don't, yeah, don't have your perception colored by what Steve says. Go and watch Steve and, and figure it out for yourself if you think that is the case. You don't you don't need to watch somebody else's video about Steve to make a decision about Steve. You can watch Steve and then make the decision uh, about that. We got to wrap this up. So uh, last super chat, then we'll bid you guys a good day. And wait, we got questions. Up. Wait, well, we got to wrap it up. Our, our producer <gasps> is, is not feeling well. Okay, fine. I'm going to do the questions really goddamn fast. Inkboy for five said, example of benevolent trolling. Did you, uh, did you knew that, I'm, I'm assuming they meant no, did you know that women's anatomy doesn't allow to both put, <laughs> to put both of her elbows on her belly button at the same time? Do you want me to do the back one too? I'm wearing stripes, so my boobs aren't showing up as much. Um, Trina Porter said, I have a question for Chesh. Uh, how do you not cry when you're being yelled at? Don't take the person who's yelling at you seriously. Um, uh, and Trina Line says, I wonder why I have earned Steve's trust. You have a quick answer. You've, you've approached us in a reasonable way and you've been, you've given us the principle of charity and you've been, you've been reasonable in the way you've talked, spoken with us. Um, Mr. Sirius said, when I say believe it, it can usually be replaced with the words, please confirm. Is that not correct? It depends on the context of the conversation. If I no, say I, I, I believe I, something. No. I don't Sorry? think so. If, now okay, I was going to say ahead. no to that question. No, if I say, look, I believe okay. something, that just means I think it's the case that the proposition is true. 
There you go. That's it. I believe. So if I say the sky is blue and I say I believe the sky is blue, I am saying that this proposition the sky is blue is true. That's that's the best way to think of it. Uh, CV for 199 said, where's your uh, CV for 199 says, uh, where is your paid sublink? It says join right next to um, subscribe on the video underneath it's the uh, share and save. Uh, I also think it depends on for Mr. Series's question. I think it depends on the conversation. So if you're already having a conversation about the subject and somebody says, well, I believe this about it, then there is sort of a, a, a conversation or a social contract that you kind of expect the person to confirm about what, what they're talking about. Um, and then in tree, uh, Sorry, uh, Sandra had asked, uh, Steve, so do you think uh, you give gave me the principle of charity when I first came onto one of your lives? Because yes. that was because there was terrible things being said beforehand. Yes, yes, that is exactly the principle of charity. Correct. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and by the way, Sandra, you weren't the only one that I gave principle of charity to. I Again, I try to start everybody off as neutral. I hear a lot of shit, right? I hear a lot of shit about you. Yes. I hear a lot of shit about other people. Um, this person doesn't like this person. This person doesn't like that person. This person talks shit about this person. I know a lot of fucking people, and I cannot, in good conscience, say okay because this person says something about ne- this person that's negative that I have to take that um, to be the absolute case, right? I will judge everybody individually on how they treat me, and I. But I'll keep it in mind if this person say, look, if this person is passive aggressive, then I might, in the back of my mind, say, okay. I'm going to look for signs of that person being the passive aggressive. I see it. I go, Hey shit, you're right. If I don't see it, I go, well, I think you've evaluated it wrong. Right. But I treat everybody independently. So when Sandra, people talk about you and uh, there was other people being talked about, I started about off neutral. You didn't do anything negative to me. You didn't talk shit about me. You weren't um, hostile to me. Yeah. That's exactly what I mean by giving people principal charity and cookies in the, in the, yeah. in, in that, in that sense of the of, of principal charity. A good example on the other side of that is Science First when he came in. We're at we're in a position now where people are complaining that Steve had this person on his channel and he, therefore he's an apologist for having that person on the channel um, to talk about something completely unrelated. We're at the point where the people who are complaining that Steve had this person on their channel and have been calling him these things have treated us worse than the person who came on the channel who's actually been Absolutely. convicted. So congratulations they're, 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 to the people who have a problem with this person. That person has been nothing but cordial and kind and forthcoming with information towards us. So we're willing to give them the benefit of the doubt to have conversations and to talk uh, talk to them about different issues. Whereas every single person that has come after us for this has treated us or more poorly than somebody convicted of a crime previously. Why should the flying hell should we listen to you? Yeah, these and these people have actually exposed themselves to be dishonest, they've to be reprehensible. They have gone after me, they've gone after my friends, they've gone after my family, uh gone and after And they'll continue to do so. And still continue to do so. They will continue to do so. Yeah. So I mean they, uh, and they, they will, have no more high for ground years. whatsoever. To say the, yeah. I mean, these are the people that have that have actually try to harm people in real life. They have no more high ground. None of them. So anybody you know, we, we, we're not going to talk about it again, but anybody who talks about uh, this ORP thing, anybody talks about me being any of that, you know what? Just recognize where it comes from. Those people are reprehensible people that are just trying to smear. And there's they're, yeah. they're being so open about being reprehensible. Like science first, I'm sorry. He exposed himself as just a horrible human being the way he treated you. Horrible. Absolutely. There's no excuse for how he treated you. And so he can't ha- take any moral high ground, you know? But anyways, guys, we got to wrap this up. Uh, my producer's fading out. He's not feeling very well. I'm not doing that great either. Yeah, we need to get um, the hell Chester, out of here. You got tomorrow night, uh, 7 Eastern on <gasps> Cheshire's channel. She's got uh, Manya. so much fun. We'll yeah, actually be, be able to sh- go over a little bit more about... Yeah, we can actually. Uh, we're actually going to be able to go uh, go over a little bit more about the uh, the situation and how we've actually been treated by these types of people, by the people who are coming after us and and, oh, and so go, you, just going after Steve and how we're treated by proxy, guilt by association, essentially is what it comes down to. But we'll be going on about that. We're going to have Sweet Heathen on. We're going to have Golden Unicorn coming on. We're going to have Nikki uh, Serrated Kiss is going to be coming on, and it'll be me, and it'll be the four of us, and we'll sort of be discussing uh, our situations and our experiences on uh, pla- uh, on. Twitter platforms as well as other platforms and how people try and what what they kind of do to us and how we get 
Golden I'm Unicorn sort of... has failed at engineering, by the way, if anybody doesn't know. But yeah, so yes. the, so a bunch of a bunch of women are going to get together I and actually the voice themselves their own words and talk. And I don't even know what's going to be talked about because they haven't really. Oh, it's going to be great. It's going to be a really good time. So we're basically going to. Yeah. And that's at seven. Yeah. PM EST tomorrow. What I what I am hoping for this before we end this is that um, I'm hoping for yeah, that video that questions. they do tomorrow. Feel free, ask us I'm questions on that, Twitter. Ask us in the comments. Yeah, I, I'm I'm hoping that after that video is done, anybody who ever says that I am somehow like manipulating anybody or I'm somehow uh, I don't know when it comes to women, go watch that video because I mean. That bullshit has gone so far out the window, it's to be ridiculous. Um, I'm actually yes. I put women on a pedestal, I am old fashioned, I'm chivalrous, I I get shit for opening door for women kind of crap. Um, I do I not do it anything last week. inappropriate. I ask for consent if I if I if I if I ask anybody out or if I if I if I, if I want to banter with them, I make sure they're comfortable. And like I said, I've only asked out one person in a year. One person have I asked out. So anybody who guys, says that Steve hits on everybody, you're full of shit. You're just absolutely lying. And I dare anybody to tell me otherwise. If you guys want to know more about the doxing situation, go and watch Elusive Man's channel, his video from last night. Very good. Explains the whole situation very well now that you know what doxing is. Go go and look at it. Yeah, he, he does a very really good, good job ex ex really like, good. Ex essentially exposing all of that. Um, and secondly... I'm going to call it now because I called it last week. I'm going to call it again. I guarantee you people will be pushing the narrative that Steve still is using these women because he and that we're all puppets or Muppets of him because they're going to say that it was his idea. Bullshit. It wasn't my idea. My idea. It wasn't really my idea. I didn't have anything fucking to do with it. I found out well not after the all. fact. Yeah. Not at they all. Were, they have a little secret group that I'm not invited to or whatever, man. But no, it was, this was not my fucking idea. But I am curious and I will watch it. But you know, again, when when you have very four, when you have four very very independent thinker women, I mean, you, Manya, Sweet, uh, Nikki. I mean, you guys are we not all tag your, each other. <laughs> yeah, you guys are not your demure kind of pacifist. You know, let the man speak for you kind of pe people. Matter of fact, I, uh, we're going to end this in a soon. So I know Dave's got to go. Uh, but like for example, we had a video caffeine corner a while back where one of these guys, his name was HD, and, and there's another guy with him, but I don't remember his name. But they had actually put words in, uh, basically, Sweet Heathen's mouth and, probably, and try to tell her, you know, how idiot she was and for trusting me and, and blah, 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 and blah, 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 and treated her like a child. And it was very demeaning. And Sweet murdered him with words. Just oh, wrote the most mm, visceral wow. thing I think I've ever read in my mm. entire life. And yet this motherfucker is still around <laughs> leaving comments because he's so butthurt by it trying to attack me and i'm like look at you demeaned a friend of mine you demeaned somebody who could speak for themselves and treated them like a child because you thought they were too stupid to actually uh, you know have any kind of thoughts for themselves or make any decisions for themselves you are the problem dude you are the you are the pre you are the kind of person that feminists should go after because you treat women like children and that to me is morally reprehensible um links are in descriptions down below um, actually, I'm going to link uh, Elusive Man's thing in the chat right now, just so that way it's easy for people to find. Um, but also, if you want to buy... Just says he's a good fucking idiot, so he knows who I'm talking about. Yeah, he's a he's an idiot. Oh, yeah. yeah this, is the, this is the person yeah. who like will come around to my art channel and try and troll me about art. It's hilarious. It was pretty funny, actually. I'm not going to lie. I got a kick out of that. Um, oh, it's on the Danger Zone channel. My mistake. Yeah, it's on the danger. All not, right, let's um, wrap this up. Uh, uh, if you guys, want to buy anything for Puck, this. anything that is extra for Puck will be donated to the local animal shelter. So if you want to get anything, uh, links are down there. Uh, your PayPal is down there. My Patreon is, or sorry, your Patreon is down there. My Patreon is down there. I think Bull's Patreon is down there. So if you want to support any of us separately, links are below. Uh, and the interview with the four girls will be on my channel. Uh, I'll be sure to tweet it out. If you guys have any other questions for us, feel free to hit us up wherever. Sounds good to me. God. And here's the link. God, he's like, I just want to die. God, he, God's not feeling well. Yeah, I'm really not, guys. It's okay, Have a man. good day. Goodbye, good everybody. Man. Bye. Goodbye. See you next week.